half a dozen Hello. new things it's doing every time you fucking launch it. I was half a dozen yesterday. I'm pretty sure that's six. Six. The Lascalia gods, yeah, six. The yeah. six. Yeah. Right on. Praise the six. What's everyone's favorite Lascalia six member? Ooh. Mm. Noom. Not you're disqualified. I know. I know. <laughs> uh, I would need to see the full list again. Probably uh, Nelstat. Shelmarie is pretty cool too. Don't know. It's too hard to pick. I'll answer for no. Proghorn, the Frog King. Yep. Disqualified. Conchon Ball. That's it. Yeah. Good answer. I mean, who doesn't want to give demons free will? What a great idea. All right. I'm all in. Not the replace point. The new and improved point. New and improved? Now it's stuff that he always had, I just never bothered putting in because he didn't, he wasn't in any fights. But now he has moves. Show us your moves. Wait, we can actually just see his moves because we can, uh, what is it called? Uh, you're gonna you're gonna burst sight point. Yeah, burst sight. <laughs> He'll know if we burst sight. Please don't burst sight me, mate. I mean, you can if you just want to know what I can do. I can just tell you. You don't have to. You don't have to do all that. I, I didn't click the button. I didn't technically do it. Well, technically, this session hasn't started yet, so this isn't canon either. True. Cool, so I burst sight him. Non canonically. Alright. It doesn't work. <sighs> it only works. I canonically. burst sight Oven right in the face. It might wow. take a while to post everything to yeah. Actually you can just look at my sheet anytime you want. No. No, we can't, because you're you're not under torchbearers for some reason. What? Like when I go to actors Major, AAA major characters, A torchbearers. I don't see Oven. That's weird. Because I see everybody else. Yeah, I see everyone else. Just, I never see Oven there. Yeah, I don't see Oven. So you're not really part of the team, is what yes, the I'm, system's trying to say. I, yeah, I'm the fourth torchbearer is Notes. Yeah. I don't see Notes, so. I... I've given everyone Oven. observer of Oven. I apparently missed Oven. Oh, hold on. I'm here to secretly <laughs> sabotage everything. Yeah. Hold on. I've got to. I've got to switch to Firefox because Chrome fucks up Forge. I'm the opposite. I have to use Chrome instead of Firefox. Yeah. Because reasons. When I use Chrome, all the clocks are fucked up. Oh no, where's Oven's XP? For me, it's the exact opposite, actually. I have to use it. I just, uh, I just barely my... leveled up last time. So. Oh, yeah. Right. Yeah. It's in uh, level, so two. level 2. That's why. Yeah. I was like, yeah. what the hell? It, I probably it's changed actually... it on the token and not. Yeah. It's actually so weird, because like, it literally it works on uh, on uh, on Chrome. The, the clocks, but they don't work on Firefox, which is the opposite of you, right? The clocks work yeah. on Firefox. But on Chrome. <laughs> Yours is the same as Matt and the opposite of mine. So yeah. uh, who knows how it's working? You can hitch a ride on Vanguard. That's one of Point's main abilities. But can Vanguard hitch a ride on us? No. No. Wow, that's kind of rude. What if he gets tired? All right, everyone, um, we will be doing recap in a bit, but first let's do introduction. Shocking new order. Uh, let's start with let's Blix here. All right. Hello, I am playing Zephyr, the Air Genasi, Tempest Domain Cleric of Noom. He is... He was a hermit for a long time, and now he wants to go out into the world enacting positive change. 
Let's go Duggle. Duggle is a wizard. Um, who, yeah, he is a wizard, that is true, uh, who has very little confidence in himself. In fact, that is overstating his self-confidence. He has none. Although recently, he did receive a vest from a very good friend that hasn't given him confidence in himself just yet. But uh, maybe it'll get there in a few dozen years. And that friend was Zephyr. All right, we're just passing introductions back and forth between each other. (laughs) Yeah, introduce yourself again. Yes, and... um, shows how good I am at tracking voices right now. Um, that friend was Zephyr, um, but I'm going to pass it to Oven. Hi, I'm Shrike. I play Oven Stonecrusher, the Minotaur, part of the Mistfell military, where our group is originally from, and we are the Torchbearers, of course, from Mistfell. He excels in most things physical and combat-related, but is also... Uh, a studier of ancient magic in the form of ruins. So let's give it to Jazz to tell us about Gruul. Uh, Jazz, I play Gruul, who is a uh, druid, uh, essentially, um, that uh, grew up in the wilds, was raised by a pride of Sleeker, and, which are sort of big cats with horns. And I'm looking forward to play today. Uh, I'll pass it on to Pog, who is the longest introduction of them all. True. All right, hello, I'm Pog. I play, uh, I'll just list a few of the characters that I play because I play a few. So first we've got Point here. Now to go into Point's backstory, uh, Point originally... I can't do this. This bit is too bad. Three hours later. (laughs) That's the end of the session. All right, so now let's go back to the post-calamity. But anyway, I'm the DM. Yeah, Point does not separate from Vanguard. That's one thing about Point in battle. They are package deal. Uh, so Point and Vanguard together are an NPC ally. I'm just testing this out for a bit to see how it works. Um, the main thing about Point is Point and Vanguard together are very slow. They only move three spaces. And they only dash one. So, they're not going to get anywhere in a hurry. However, Point makes up for it with his very long-range ability. Pow. Range 12, jeez. Uh, he also uses the standard ability Strafe Shot, which also gives a dash to help get into range while reloading the rifle, which takes an action. That's the thing about Point. Uh, The other things that he can do, he's got this melee attack. Uh, Once per battle, he can cure an ally. Wow. Reaction, cool. And he can can summon these turrets. Vanguard does not have reach. Vanguard has stubby arms. Vanguard breach is mostly an ability to get people off Vanguard. It's actually not armored. Wow, it shoves three. Cool. Yeah. So that's how Point and Vanguard will fight as part of your team. Despite their name, they probably won't be up in the Point or the Vanguard position due to being slow as hell. Uh, you know what, that's fine. We need someone to take up the rear. Which position's name I forget right now. That's alright. Uh, rear guard is what they're called in Card Fight Vanguard. Anyway. Where we last left off. Actually, I'll do the recap. What the hell is happening here? I switched and like my entire thing broke. Alright, recap in five. Ass and took names. Four. Three. Two. Uh, 
Pascalians, welcome back to Hinklia. After making their way towards the checkpoint of the Elven Desert, the torchbearers stopped by a foreboding ogre along the way, but through pleasant conversation decided to pass by harmlessly after finding the ogre was hunting chimeras for the queen. Later, the torchbearers arrived at the checkpoint where the strange individual whose shadows they've been chasing made their appearance, a man named Point Tierwin, who works alongside Bastard Child of the Thaxtesian King for some reason. Spurred on by Elven's bravado, the torchbearers agreed to lie to a Hinkley official to smuggle this person across the border, an act they will surely face severe legal consequences for just kidding i don't care this <laughs> point explained his point in being there he also explained the golden he rides on vanguard was made by a former child prodigy and rival of arihan man who now goes by the name of drew helm while merry making point challenged duggal to decipher the runes and to the surprise of everyone duggal was able to understand the underlying principles drew helm had an unorthodox approach to magic due to his absence from traditional magic study and as a result he has the same magic construction style duggal uses though he was far from achieving this level duggal saw a path forward that he could one day walk walking a different path however to Towards the desert temple, the torchbearers encountered a cactus with a rare fruit. We'll snatch the fruit, saving it for later. The group was attacked by mistwalkers in the desert. Or, rather, the torchbearers attacked the mistwalkers in the desert. After a tough battle, the mist cleared and the group was reunited with their new ally. As the curtain closed on this session, Zephyr destroyed a cactus in the desert for no discernible reason. If the reason cool. would have been discernible had there been something in the cactus. <laughs> like 100% of the cactuses we had broken up to that point. Cactus. Now it's only 50 50, so. Yeah. We... yeah. Basically, where the All greatest right. party ever exists. Everyone, you are approaching the desert temple, the Aldonian Oasis. This is the next text. As you get to this temple, you, you will have to find a way in there. So, I'll go over the dungeon rules once you get into the temple, but you come to the oasis uh, in the middle of the desert. It's actually absurdly large for some reason. You're not exactly certain why there's so much water. Uh, this thing is huge. And there's just this giant crater that's been filled with water. Virtually all the water in the Eldonian Desert seems to be here. It's a major fixture of the terrain. Uh, the lake is so large you can barely see across the other side. Point takes you there. You park your cart around the side. Uh, and Point looks around. Alright! It's got to be somewhere. Look around, everyone. Keep your eyes peeled. Could I look into the water? Uh, you certainly could. You can also set up a camp if you'd like as well. Let's set up camp first. Yeah. We've got some people hurting. I assume we're going to want a camp outside of the dungeon we are about to enter. Yeah. Could be a good idea. Uh, if you choose to use one of your camps, you can. This will reset. How many do we have? We've got three. You've got three. We've got three, okay. Shelling's basically Yeah, I think here's ones, a good point. So. We've come a decent distance. All right. Gain effort, all HP. Oh, we get effort back? Clear strain, yep. clear all strain, regain all effort, regain all HP. Whoa, we clear strain of the camp? Yep. 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 Oh, that's super I'm looking at page 218. I was, I was worried that we had a bunch of strain, but then I was like, oh, you know, it's, maybe it's not that bad, because not every consequence is strain. But, yeah, if we're camping, then it clears it. Yeah. All right. Uh, so that will fully heal everybody. It also gets rid of our personal resolve. That's correct. Is stored somewhere there. All right. One day we will limit break. You limit break? I saw it. I was there. I didn't. I think. Uh, I think Douglas only one that has right now. For now. 
for now. All right, the limit break commences. Everyone, the limit break, the camp commences. Everyone is fully healed. Everyone regains all of their effort, all their HP, and, clear the and strain. all strain. You rest outside the oasis. The water makes it a pretty good camping spot, all things considered. Um, it is commonly inhabited, like, you see various animals throughout the desert. Um, at one point you see one of the legendary giant spiders of the Alden Desert kind of walk by, see you're there, and then walk the other way. How cute is the is water, like, spider? especially clear or anything? So... That will be the investigation that you're doing here. Um, that would be sense check for Zephyr. All right. Uh, are we still in risky, or does that go back to controlled? At this point, you are camping. This is controlled. All right. Critical success to look at the water. Whoa. The water is especially clear in a way that any person looking by would be extremely excited to see. But you know better. You know better specifically because you are you, a soul-born creature. This water is especially clear because it has been supercharged with ether. Oh. You don't know what the like... source of this ether is, but there seems to be a lot of it. And as you're looking I... at the oasis itself, um, the oasis, you notice, um, is particularly large. But when you look at the impact that created it, um, this isn't like a natural form. Like, this literally is an impact cause a crater into the ground. Oh, interesting. Like, by observing how the terrain has been deformed, you determine that at some point... Like, there was a flat ground here that has been indented by some sort of extremely heavy object or very heavy impact. Perhaps a meteor. Perhaps. Nah, just punch the ground. So the water is really clear, then. I was... Can I uh, put a... Can I step one sandal into the, uh, into the water to get my toes wet? You can. It's... It stings. It's like, it feels mildly acidic yeah. to you. Okay. Really? People drink this? Yeah. So, can I... Would I know what would happen to me or other Soulborn if I drank this? Or can uh, I ask Juggle that? You would know, like, right away that this would just be bad for you. It probably wouldn't okay. kill you, like, the concentration isn't so heavy that you would, like, die or anything like that. But you would get mm -hmm. sick. It'll be fine for Worse like, than not drinking the water? Like, if I were dying of dehydration? If you were dying of dehydration, would... drink the water. This will just make you feel, okay. like, lightheaded and anemic for a while. Whereas okay. dehydration will literally kill you. Yeah. Alright, I was thinking about more of, like... What do Soulborn do when they come through here? Okay, hmm. yeah, they can still drink it, but... but I, wonder I, if it's leech... I wonder if it's leeching it from something underground. Almost like a powerful artifact that would be in a nearby tomb. Yeah, or whatever fell. <laughs> this was a. This is an impact oh. crater. It's hard to see, but... Yeah, that's why this oasis is here. Could it have divvied up? Divium in it. Point I is mean, like visibly excited. Oi! Everyone, you've got to try the water. This water is incredible. Duggle takes a drink. Yeah, the rest of you can. Duggle, the ah, water is incredible. Infused. That is it's really good water. With ether. So for you, uh, Clayborn and Lightborn, that must be amazing. Ether. That would, that would explain why it's so clear, I guess. Well, I don't see a pyre anywhere near. And it definitely isn't arriving all the way from Shellin, that's for sure. 
What do you think, Doggle? You're the wizard type. Hmm. Well. Yeah, I, I think Doggle is also like filling water skins because when you find water this good, you you hold on to that water. You you savor that water. Um, but he is thinking as he does this. Um. Can I try something? If I like put I this crystal inside the in the water, what, does it like absorb? Uh, you see, if you put the Cliss Crystal inside and the Cliss Crystal is completely empty, that it actually starts to slowly suck up the ether in the water. It is not by any means an efficient way of storing this crystal. No, but I imagine you could probably make the water better for, uh, like, Zephyr. Yes, uh, you could take the water. Like, if you had a bowl and you put the crystal in the bowl, you could suck the ether out of it and just turn it oh. into normal water. Yeah. Brilliant idea, Oven. And then have someone else that wants the ether drain the crystal and repeat. All right. I will give you two choices here. Um, a minor complication, reduced effect. Actually, I'll give you three. And the third one is lesser harm. Um, Dougal is not going to think so hard that he hurts himself. Oh, no, this isn't uh, a thinking issue. The harm will be a physical harm. Um, I'm going to go with, let's go with reduced effect. Reduced effect. So you are observing the oasis and you observe that the water has been etherized. The area around it has been lightly etherized as well, uh, to the point where there's extremely mild acimation going on right here. That's why this oasis is as idyllic as it is, obviously. Um, the oasis is growing and naturally sort of acting as a magnet for all the water in the desert. Now, for there to be a concentration of this much ether in an area that has had some sort of a impact on it, you imagine that a source of ether has impacted the ground. However, looking into the extremely clear water, you are unable to see what the source of ether would be. Uh, lest you go in deeper. Ugh. So, whatever whatever hit is probably ether rich, like chunk of something, but can't exactly see it. How I deep mean, do you think this water is? With my crit to look at the water, how deep do I think it is? It's pretty deep. Like, it, pretty it's. Deep. It's a sloping lake, like, in the middle of it, it's very deep. But you only have to go okay. in as deep as you'd like to. Is there any sign of any building or structure that could be the temple? Because you've Anywhere done it with increased... In the water? Because you've done so with increased effect, uh, you are able to determine, as you look around very carefully... That there is one area of the water that is not diffracting light correctly. Like, like an illusion uh, that's hiding something. Yeah. Oh. Crud. The temple is in the water. That's water temple. Everyone, get your heavy boots. And make sure you are good at using the menu to equip them on and off constantly. This is going to be a problem. Uh, what's the problem? The temple's underwater! That's the problem. Probably. Oh, I, I don't know about the rest of you. I can hold my breath. Well, it's not that far in. And plus, if you're worried that you'll float, I could have Vanguard hold you. We got like a strap. Douglas briefly um, considers the prospect of being held underwater by a golem as he loses his breath. Um, no, no, I, uh, uh, I can probably figure that out, but 
That's a lot to stick Zephyr into. I... Yeah, to be in it, I can... The thing is, I don't need to breathe. But, yeah, being submerged in that much ether water... I mean, I could hold uh, one of the crystals, or I could hold all the crystals. Clisp. What are they? The Clisp crystals? Clisp. Yes, that's correct. Yeah. I could hold those. Can you, like, uh, cast your, like, wind spell to make, like, a bubble or something as we walk? Yeah, I was also going to see if I could, yeah, use some kind of air magic to grant water breathing Okay, let's to the rest of the party. Let's see a tinker check. All right. I have I will one assist. tinker. I have two tinker. So, uh, you assist, want to expend one effort to help. Assisting does spend one effort, Dougal. Yeah. Um, actually, should we do this the other way around? I've got two Tinker Base. Oh. Oh, so uh, Dougal casts yeah. the spell and Zephyr, like, pushes the wind into it? Yeah, because yeah. Dougal does a bunch of water manipulation. Okay. Yes, I will spend one effort to help. Right on. Which would be free if I were a mender. Maybe you can retrain that when you get the shelling. Yeah. Oh, beans. All right. I will give you uh, one option entirely, which is to press on by using a risky opportunity. I'm going to do that. All right. Good choice. Um, you... Can I, I mean, use just parable? Parable. Uh, oh, no, never mind. This is all the, the same thing. He's just pushing on. Okay, never mind. Yes. Uh, you are able to create these bubbles, and as you start, um, they actually like hold in the air exceptionally well. Um, you make your way down uh, to deeper into where you suspect the temple and the illusion to be. And as you descend deeper into the temple... That's when disaster strikes. Your bubble holds up to very minimal amounts of pressure and nothing else. The bubble collapses, and the bubble, uh, in a panic as it collapses, uh, Point sees that it's closer to get to the temple than otherwise, so he hugs all of you and just releases his spell on Vanguard. Vanguard just drags you down like a stone, and you collapse into the temple. Sweet. So is, is the temple uh, filled with water, or is the it... temple is partially filled with water? Um, you notice okay. that there is a illusory magic preventing it, and then you notice that essentially there is a waterproofing spell that's not one hundred percent perfect. Some water okay. is leaching in, but not a lot. And you sink, you sink, you fall. <gasps> Hell yeah! We did it. We found it. Getting out is going to be a I'd pain in the ass, but we did it. Good job, Bubble. Uh, Hands ever. We did it. I think that's exactly how I thought it would go, so perfect. All right, welcome to the dungeon. Because you've entered the dungeon in this manner, you've actually started off risky which means you accrue one on our dungeon clock. So let's add a dungeon clock. Nice. Oh, boy. We get to learn about mechanics now. Hold on. I've got a... I guess I should pick a new bond power still from the Elder. From leveling up. One second, let me just get this little sort of UI Oops. thing. You can use this opportunity to use I'm bond good. power. Yep, I've got it. I've got to add it now. I'm going to immediately lose this as soon as I switch, but...
It'll be a couple sessions, probably. Ta-da! It's this superpower one for the Elder. Oh, yeah. Every, every, uh... Yeah. One has some version of superpower. So, all of you should now be able to see this little UI that I've created in the top corner? Nope, because it's in uh, Fog of War. What happens or... if you deselect your character? I, I don't have my characters. Or I didn't. Can you now see it? No. Nope. It's black. If the you... stream can see it, though. The stream can see it. Um, you should all be able to see it. Oh, okay. If I change to measurement controls, I can see it now. I cannot. You really do have to somehow unselect your character, which is easier said than done. Perhaps by using... Uh... Oh, there it is. Yes. All right. So this is the... Okay, I got it. Here's one little tip on this. So, welcome to Dungeon Exploration, everyone. In Dungeon Exploration, rooms and hallways are clearly delineated. Um, hallways, for example, I will open this one because this door is free. Can't move my character. Oh, or pause, that's why. Yes. Let's see. So... Uh, first of all, light is a problem in these dungeons. If you have an, if you'd like to have a torch to deal with this light problem, I'd recommend it. Okay. Yes, let's light up a torch. Now, the advantage to lighting up a torch is while you are able to see, which is good, uh, you will have a bane to stealth, which is bad. Gruel has ten torches apparently. <laughs> Nice. Gruel's got the torches <laughs> on deck. That is correct. She likes to uh, juggle them like bowling pins. That's a lot of torches. 5e uh, carrying capacity was a little wild. You could carry a lot of stuff. Alright, so now we've got a torch on Gruel. Uh, we'll all, by the way, that uh, it is quite cramped in here. Yes. That is a problem. Uh, if you would like point not to be in front, n speak now or forever hold your peace, I suppose. I mean, oh my you're God. just going to have to like, squeeze through these areas. And... Uh, one second, I just have to divide these by five. I mean, girl can hand the torch off to someone else if girl wants to be sneaky or anything. Yeah. Yeah, I'd rather not hold the torch, personally. I, I could hold the torch. But uh, I don't know if that would really affect it. The, the way this works is we decide how we want to move through the dungeon. Oh, there's like rules, right? That's correct. So the rules have been slightly changed since we last used them, um, as we now have in mechanics for this. So controlled, risky, and desperate. Uh, you have a speed limit, which is the minimum that you're allowed to do. Uh, for example, if you're being chased, you cannot control to go through the dungeon. Fair. Yeah. For the most part, there's not going to be a speed limit. Uh, controlled, risky, and desperate all are the phase from which you investigate a room. So, Gruel has lit a torch. Thank you, Gruel. Everyone say thank you, Gruel. Thank, thank you, Gruel. Thank you, Gruel. Thank you. Now you can see. I'm also going to go you, ahead. You don't get inherent dark vision in the system, I guess. More like bark fishing. Rough, rough. Any dogs? I don't think we have any dogs in this campaign. No, I'm um, Twitter removed their doge icon. You know why they added that? I learned this story uh, while it was very funny. There, There's some um, theories. <laughs> the theory is so good. Anyways, <laughs> that aside, you are now able to see into rooms... Uh, very obvious hallways and such. So clearly, up ahead, there's a hallway to the south, and there's a room to the east. You should give the torch to uh, Zephyr. Not yeah, I can torch. take the torch. Zephyr will take the torch. Uh, you can also decide which way that you'd like to go, so... 
who is in front, etc. Let's see. Huh? Cool. Point, despite his name and the name of his um, legendary companion, would actually prefer to be on the back. That is yeah. fine. I want to be in the front. Can the golem Unless go through going, the hallways? I want to be in the front. They can, the golem can squeeze. It is difficult terrain to squeeze through the hallways. Okay. Now, this is bad because as we've established, point moves slower than everyone else. That's why... For these cases, it would be beneficial. Actually, point was just point and not vanguard. I think we're actually going to have him dismount for the first time. They're always together. Immediately breaks that rule. Listen, <laughs> it, it's very it. bad. It is. It's not good. How, how do turns work? Is it like a cumulative turn, or is it like yes. popcorn? Or? The, the turn works by groups. By default, we assume that you are not suicidal and are traveling as a group. It is possible to split the party. If you do so, then it is popcorn initiative. It is not advised to split the party in this. Or any system, for that matter. But It especially. is especially bad. Um... Once again, the feather and a hat token that everyone has come to know and love. We have to have it all the time. It's gotta, it's gotta be this guy. What? I was gonna say, he reminds me of Alex, and that's the same icon he uses, Alex. It's just a ripped off of Orem. Alright, the Vanguard Orem Breach the first one to do and the one. Hitch Ride have been disabled. Uh, Point's health now goes down to 24, but Point is now fast. As Point is technically a skirmisher when dismounted. Nice. Does Vanguard not exist? Vanguard is watching. Vanguard cannot fit through the tunnels easily, and therefore Point has dismounted. Okay, so anyways, we're getting sidetracked. Rooms can be explored as a group. It is advised that you move as a group. You then decide mm -hmm. which caution level you'd like to investigate in. Now, I posted Desperate. this before. Desperate. But you see that dungeon clock in the top? As you move through the dungeon, depending on how you move, you will advance this clock. So, here it is. A controlled move when you fail a roll, it advances the clock by two. All right, yeah. Because you're going slow, so the clock is ticking up fast. Yep. Uh, when you have a partial success, it advances the clock by one. And with a critical success, the clock is not advanced. If you move risky, a failure and a partial success advance the clock by one. A success or a critical success... Advance the clock by zero, and on desperate moving, you only advance the clock if you fail. Now, consequently, if you move risky or if you move desperate, the consequences for failing rolls are so much more significant. True. I have been incentivized to do risky. <laughs> now, this dungeon clock. When the dungeon clock advances, you have a venting mechanism that you can use to pull back on the clock. First of all, some critical successes will allow you to push back the clock as an option. Secondly, at any point, you may activate the dungeon cards, which as of right now don't have cards because I've not gotten cards made for them. The dungeon cards for this dungeon work as follows. Um, there is a 2, a 4, a 6, an 8, and then a 12. You notice when the clock is filled, it's a 12 series clock. If at any point this clock fills up, I automatically play the 12 card, which is Dungeon Break. Our Dungeon Break for this dungeon here is I hold the card, meaning I can use it at some point in the future. The Dungeon Clock can no longer in advance and is permanently locked at 10. Why 10 out of 12? Yes. Because oh. this will allow you to then, like, play cards for no reason. 
It doesn't matter. It's just permanent. <laughs> I was like, I don't understand, but all right. It doesn't matter. I just put 10, and then... Because <laughs> I like 10. It's a good number. So, I hold each card except reinforcements. I'll go into reinforcements in a bit. When the dungeon's final boss is defeated, the dungeon will begin to cave in. I then will use every card at once, and I will start a new <laughs> clock for escaping the dungeon before a cave-in. So it's a load-bearing boss no matter what. If you get to 12. So if you oh, okay. if you let the dungeon break happen, it becomes a load-bearing boss. Cool. Oh. Okay. So you don't want that to happen, so Dramatic. you'll want to roll well to like push back the clock, and if it gets too bad, well, you can then play these cards. So for example, a two-cost card is Arrow Trap. The Arrow Trap when you play this card, reduces the clock by two. Then I choose to deal D8 damage to every member of the party, which cannot take someone below half HP, to give all party members one strain, or to give one party member, the person who called this card, three strain. Okay. It's weirdly, like, reversed, but okay. So the idea is, um... In this particular case, um, one person takes like a huge amount of damage. Uh, one person mm. or everyone takes a little bit of damage from the arrow trap, or uh, people take combat damage, which will then lower their combat HP. Mm. Now, the reason why I choose is because if you all fall below half HP at some point, then you can just spam arrow trap and then like never worry about the clock. If you had infinite arrow trap card, which you probably don't. Uh, no, you can play these cards arbitrarily. Oh. So they're your venting mechanism. Take damage in exchange for pulling back the clock. Um, then there's reinforcements. It's a four cost card, so it pulls the clock back by four. And what it does is it adds one enemy to a room combat. So, any combat that already has enemies is part of the room combat. If you play the reinforcements card, I will copy one enemy from this combat and put them in. Note, you cannot use this against the dungeon boss. Um, I don't know why you would want to, but you should not. Double the boss for double the loot. Obvious. Six, electric floor. A new clock is made. The person who plays this card rolls 1d3 plus 4 to see how filled the clock is, so it's at most 4. Once the clock is filled, at any point, I can apply one bane and remove one tick of the clock. Okay. That bane applies right. to everything, or a specific thing? It's a roll, so you'll make a roll, oh. and then I'll Jeez. just apply one bane. Like, I'll take away... You just randomly nerf your roll. Yeah. Then, cave in. It's an 8 tick. A corridor caves in. All members must save or take d10 damage in two strain. If you make the save, you take d8 damage in one strain. Then it creates a clock um, if you want to try to break this cave in. Otherwise, you have to find a way around. This one has a special effect, which is you can play it during a room combat as well, and it will create rocks in the room that you're fighting. I don't recommend doing that, but you can do it. Make sense? And, okay. Yes. So, basically, you don't want this clock to fill up, because if you do, then this becomes a load-bearing boss situation, and you will get completely and utterly destroyed, and also the dungeon will be irreparably destroyed if you make it out alive. You so might you just escape. Nobody just does. escape. Now, finally, these cards exist, and you can use them as a venting mechanism. If you fail a roll, I can also just play the cards. So, a result of failing a roll could be, um, like, penalty, electric floor card is played, for example. You triggered the trap. Are these cards, like, specific to this dungeon, or just generic? They're specific to this dungeon. Every dungeon will have its own unique card. So in this case, the electric floor 
is unique to this dungeon. It's the trap that is signature to this dungeon. Some of them are going to be more generic than others. Like, Arrow Trap is probably going to appear all over the damn place. Now, People in Luscalia really like Arrow Trap. You'll notice that uh, the these cards have a certain cost associated with them that are paid with the dungeon clock. So, that means... As you're advancing through the dungeon, the clock gets more and more filled. When you fail a roll, I can then use these cards against you. But I cannot exceed the dungeon clock. So, if you let the clock fill up too much, then I can play Cave-In on you as the fight starts. All you right. fail a roll, trying to sneak past the enemies, and um, you accidentally like knock over a load-bearing pillar or something. I don't know. My bad. Sorry, guys. <laughs> I can't help my fist break through stone so easy. So to that end, managing the dungeon clock is the meta game to be played here. All right. Yeah. So uh, you want to keep it low so you can't use the big cards on it. Otherwise, you just keep it at like 10 and just maintain it there forever and not hit 12. I'm also going to pin this. Um, this is my like rough draft version, and therefore I don't recommend it uh, fully, as it's not like a proper write up. But again, I don't actually have the cards, so you can just look at these to like get a rough estimate of what they are at all times. But with that in mind, welcome to the dungeon. I think we should go west. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> what do you mean, just okay? You're just going to trust me on that? Okay. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's right here. It's the one that I'm next to. How would you no, like to let's, investigate? Uh, let's, let's look through the, uh, the hallway over here. I want to look through what's in here. Okay. Uh, when you look out into the adjacent room, uh, I'll you... unpause you. There appears to be a circular chamber, uniquely shaped. In the next room, you notice this place has been flooded and that this is not a perfectly levered chamber. Level? Or level? I'm scared level. to walk through the doorway. Why are you scared? I mean, we're not going to walk anyway. through the doorway. Okay, <gasps> how are you investigating? Um, what am I investigating? Uh, you are it's... entering the next room. How are you investigating? Control, yeah, it... risky, or desperate? Oh, um, controlled. Okay, oh, give me a sense check as you're looking around in this room. Or, um, actually, controlled ain't so want... bad. Sent, you have four cents. You have four pips. Actually, controlled might be smart if you're sensing. But success no. still will move one clock. Yeah, have let's to do risky. Risk. Risky's better. Okay, risky it is. Uh oh. All right. That, that's east, not west. I know. I wanted to see what. <laughs> I wanted to see Chill. what was in here first. Was... <laughs> oh, they just we came to went for the jugular. <laughs> Chill. I mean, he agreed to go west and then went east. So, I was... of course, I uh, was risky. To be fair, he might not have a compass, right? True. Yeah. Yeah, and we could be. Oh, jeez. Hey. I get my okay, left so and right mixed up all the time. <laughs> the sense of dread builds. Bom, so, bom. as you are looking around, you have two options. A complication yeah. occurs, or you suffer harm. Uh, in this case, suffering harm would be accidentally activating a partial electric trap, which then causes the water to zap you. Partial. Um, what's the complication? The complication in this case would be you splash around and make a lot of noise. Uh, what did Go with 
parm. I don't I don't think it carried over, but I I am resistant to lightning. It's it doesn't carry over, but All right. That's what I would do. Yeah, harm. That's what you would do. Hey, I'm proud of you. You made a a selfless choice. You take damage. Ouch. This will be two strain. Two strain. All right. Is there any an option other than strain for him to take? Not in this case. Okay. Strain. All right. As you're splashing around in the water, you trip over some sort of strange, like, metal thing. And when you do, it causes the water to become electrified. Also, don't forget that this system has Tempt Fate as well. Keep it in mind, just in case you really want an extra roll. Yeah. Uh, I am also going to expand this and allow anyone to apply Tempt Fate on someone else. Oh, yeah, I guess it is if I say by the player. I just assumed everyone, but... Yeah, you're just in, like, Blades in the Dark mode when you see yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. So that's how it works in Blades in the Dark. Alright. Should... Alright, do you want to continue this way, or should we go west? I just wanted to... I could see into this room, and I wanted to see what was up here. There's another... It goes up north into another room. Yes, it goes up Maybe. north. There is a locked door to the south. We just instinctively know it's locked. Yeah. There is a large padlock on the door. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, do you want to go west? Who, does someone want to check that door to the west? Uh, the door to, to the, the to the west is locked. I don't see any way to open it? the door. I mean, I don't. I don't see how. It's just sort of like What's a solid door metal door. It's made of metal. What are the hinges connected to? They're connected to a stone wall. I see. Hey. I see. I see a way to get through this door. <laughs> you know, you crush. <laughs> Holy up. I mean, you just got shocked going east, right? Yeah. Maybe we should stay out of the water. Yeah, the room up north is submerged. I can I mean, that doesn't seem did. ideal to us. Not submerged, but there's, there's water. Yeah, I I'd can... like to break the um, stone around the hinges so we can just push the door. Okay, speed limit. There's no way this is anything but risky. Yeah, of course. This is where uh, I would be applying speed limit. You, can you go desperate if you want? You can go desperate if you'd like. So risky is like just carefully like breaking where they're connected off. And then like desperate is just like body slam tackling the door off the hinges. Do what you want. Yeah, all right. I'll do desperate. Oh, my God. Why not? <laughs> uh, <laughs> break the door down. Uh, desperate, no modifiers, go. Hey! Nice. Nice, you break the door down. No problem. Ah. So said force can't work. Well done! So, as you break the door, Ooh. inside you can see that there is a strange statue. Um, it appears to depict some sort of, like, a hero, but you have no idea who this person is. Uh-oh. Is there, like there is a plinth on the statue, which is written in a language that you do not understand. Hmm. Oh, so, like, none of us know this language? That's correct. The lighting in this room is weird, but okay. Uh-oh. Uh what the hell? Oh, there you go. This is an old Okamoan. Oh, what? This is an Okamoan. Thanks for lighting this room up. It's it's quite dark. Oh, that's why. So, if you look at the statue, the base of the plinth there, it's written in an ancient language. This is the language of the pre-calamity. What's it doing here? This... 
This temple's much older than I thought it would be. By the Frog King. What? Is it is it a statue what? of an orc? Frog King. It is a statue of what appears to be like an orcish warrior. Um, but again, you don't know like anything. You don't know who this guy is or what the hell this is at all. What is the statue made of? The statue is made out of the same material that this temple appears to be made out of. It's an aged sandstone. Hmm. The sword is also kind of strong? Yes, it's not a real sword. I would sword. like to roll um, to see if uh, I can, if I learned any old Orkamoan as part of history studies and might be able to okay. get at least some words off of this plinth. Yeah, let's take a look into it. Well, you know the critical success for this one goes brazy. You are fluent in Orkamoan. Old Orkamoan. Uh, can you spell or Orkamoan for me? Orkamoan. Orkamoan. Okay. That's what all all the whales do when they're in pain. <laughs> go, go. Rack that brain. Oh! If only three of a kind was a thing. P -p -p Partial success. I will give you a choice of a reduce effect and nothing else because nothing else makes sense here. Nothing else makes sense, yeah. I was going to go for reduced effect. You are able to see that this statue depicts the name of somebody um, because the words are written out in Orkamoan is very standardized. Um, Orkamoans, they're pre-calamity, there were the Orcish tribes that existed, and this remains how the tribes are set up, such that um, you are able to determine that this warrior is not of the tribes. You know there's tribes. This guy's not part of it. The text beneath it, you don't know what it says. Um, you're able to decipher it, and you're able to, like, roughly speak it. But it's like, if you've ever tried to read, like, the old English sagas, or, like, um, Beowulf or something like that. Yeah. Like, you, you're like, okay, I recognize one of these words, and it actually means something completely different. Yep, yep, exactly, gotcha. Um, Dougal's just gonna note it down and maybe make a, a quick sketch of the statue, but I, uh, uh, so, sorry, I, it, it's his name. He wasn't part of a, one of the tribes back then, but, uh, that's all I got. Uh, sorry, but I mean, that was probably, hmm. the name thing was probably context clueable, but we know that. Can you but, uh, copy the text down? Yeah. Uh, so it case. reads Zagresh Mufruksha. Zagresh Mufruksha. I well, know. Uh, Night means nothing to me. Doesn't seem giant related, so. I don't recognize it. I'll I'll write that down. I guess maybe maybe we'll find something out about it. But maybe he was just a guy. They don't make not... just giant statues out of just some guy, mate. Well, okay, no, but like, he has not an entire is... room dedicated to him. That's unnatural too. Yeah, and it's right at the. Entrance. Actually, does it look like what we came through was the entrance? Or is this an opening that, that you know, this wasn't originally there? It does not look like a valid entrance. However, it is the entrance that was set up. You surmise immediately that th you're not alone here. Like, someone has been to this place before to have set up this illusory fake entrance and then dug their way into this cavern. Okay. You don't know... Not the original entrance, yeah. Yes, you don't know when this was dug, but at some point, 
someone here got there before you and then set this up. Whether or not they're still there, you have no way of knowing. All right. We lit this in the bottom right-hand corner, correct? Um, that was actually already lit. Um, it is not Ooh. flame like a natural flame. It is clearly magical. Oh. Um, just by virtue of like when you go by it, it's not hot. We don't see anything in this room that would indicate people are giving like offerings or anything, right? If you would like to do that, that would be a subsequent check to investigate. Um, this would be a study. Or? It might. Anything <laughs> you do could advance the clock. Well, then did Douglas advance the clock because he was risky? With Douglas, um, with Douglas, it would not because it's part of like the room description, right? Whereas if you're like, I'm going to now investigate to see like something further in this room, that's more than just like a cursory glance. At that point, I'd say, okay, this is a separate check. Well, I mean, I don't see anything here that would indicate that there's clearly offerings set out or anything like that. So I'm just assuming. Yeah, I mean, uh, you, certainly you might want to look into it. Maybe there's something, maybe there's something here. I don't know. Uh, what's the clock at at the moment? Is two. that two? Two. Uh, maybe I gotta refresh. It's like... So he can. Pull, uh, you gotta uh, unselect your token to see it. Oh, okay, <laughs> cool. Yeah. Thank you. <clears throat> so yeah, well, pressing wrong. measurement controls. Hmm. All right. Uh, How about, do you want to go swimming or should we go south? Uh, well. I don't think it's swimming as much as getting your ankles wet. Oh, further north from here. Hmm. Mm. Oh, well, I guess I answered <laughs> you. Your going crash. over here, so. That's, that's kind of data. Yeah, I guess, oh, is that, are we allowed to be able to see that from here? Oh. Yeah, I mean, you can. Okay. Yeah. Your character can see it. Okay. Uh, All right. How deep is that water? The water at this right. point gets progressively deeper to where you would like not be able to touch the bottom. All right. If anyone has any objections, I want to swim over to it. Uh, hey. sure. Uh, it's a traverse roll, right? Yeah, go if you want to do uh, it. Go. You're good at it. Hey, let's see a traverse. All right. I wanna... I'm just gonna stay here to provide light. Uh, let's this. Mm. What's the worst that could happen if I do desperate? Can can I do a s look ahead first? Can I look for traps? I mean, you could. You want to you want to be metal? You want to be metal, Matt? What you could do is you could you could roll endure instead, and it's you floating, like sinking to the bottom with all your heavy armor on. You're just walking across to the to the chest. Nah, I'm gonna try and swim. <laughs> swim. Roll endure. I want to swim to the chest and pull it back. Basically. All right, let's see a traverse trick. Oh. And yeah, I'm, I'm gonna do desperate because I'm a ballsy. Oh no! Oh no! Oh, hey, okay. that ain't so bad. Mm. All right, I will give you a choice of a serious complication or a severe harm. Let's go with the complication. I like complication. All right. Uh, as you approach this treasure chest, you notice that there are bubbles beneath it, but nonetheless, you are just quickly sprinting forward. I think at this point, like, some people watching are probably in the back of their head thinking, like, wait, hold on, you should, like, look into that. But Ovin has never been a wait, hold on, let me look into that type of person. As you grab onto the trap, the trap begins to activate. Um, so not only is it, like, burning hot, um, but it is also now, like, descending deeper into it, pulling you with you. Oh. What do you do? Um, what kind of effect do I feel like? Does it feel like the water is being sucked down or something grabbed it? There, the bottom of this treasure chest is connected to like some sort of a mechanical device, um, which you can see has like these strange sort of black crystals alongside of it, which is causing it to retract and pull you to the bottom. Uh, you black also crystals. That's correct. Uh, the bottom is quite deep. It's about 20 feet down. Uh, you also notice your hand appears to be stuck. There seems to be some sort of adhesive mm. effect on the chest. And the chest is also, as we've established, heated. 
Uh, I would like to try to rip the um, black crystals off. Because they seem to be the power source, is my guess. Okay, that'll be a... Um, that actually will be an endure, because you have to, like, hold on to it until you're, like, deep enough down to rip the crystals off. You see what I'm saying? I yeah, okay. Um... Uh, whereas if you'd like to just rip the dress off entirely and just try to snap it off its hinge, then I'd say that's a smash, but with a bane, because it's hard. You don't have the power to rip metal, only stone. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, but what did Toph teach us all? I that metal is just crown. refined stone. I mean, that was my first thought, but I was like, oh, there's crystal. The crystals might have value as well. In theory. Mm. Uh. So is he getting pulled down? It sounds like he's getting sucked into the chest. So the treasure mm. chest has a like a piston at the bottom connected to it. Yeah. The piston is Pulls retracting. Chest down with me stuck to the chest. Oh. The chest heats up and keeps me stuck to it, I think. Okay. Uh all right. There I can use effort to get another D, right? You can? Let me see. You could also uh, maybe let go of the chest, brother. Letting go of the chest would be a smash check, but this would be much easier than trying to rip the chest off the hinge. Just wrap, like, straight up pull it off the piston. You know what? Yeah, I'll just try and rip the whole chest off, because that was my original goal. Let's was go. Just to go, grab it, and Make come it back. Chat. Whether something resists me or not yeah. was not, you know, part of my thought process. So. Yeah, you get Chad. All right, so I've got a modifier of minus 1D. Yep. And my position is... Still desperate. Still desperate. Okay. All right, rip chest off. You're underwater curling the chest. Oh my goodness. I, I trust myself. Right? Hey! I mean... <laughs> it could be worse. Could be worse. Okay. Here? Those are not sixes, but... Uh, here, you will give you will be given a choice of either severe harm or a reduced effect. Will I succeed if I take the harm? Uh, you will succeed in both cases. Um, actually, it's not really reduced effect as much as it is a serious complication. The serious complication Sorry. being that your hand, one of them, is now stuck to this chest. <laughs> um, is this, this serious harm is like four stress or something? Yeah, four strain, but your hand is not stuck to the chest. Oh, I mean, hand being stuck is not that bad. For me, in particular, but... Uh, it will give you I, a penalty to anything that requires, like, extreme bands. dexterity, but... Now watch this. I will take the serious harm. Okay. And then since I'm taking strain... <laughs> nice! Activate still nice. skin. Alright, you I'll yank it off. it out. Uh, you tough it out. At this point, you see, like, anyone else in this situation would have been heat metal to death here, basically. However, your armor is protected by giant runes, and it activates the cooling properties of it, which counteracts the heat, until eventually, separated from the crystals, the chest runs out of power, the heat begins to dissipate, and you just kind of swim over holding the chest. With its power gone, the adhesive effect also dies down. Oh? Ovin, are you, are you alright? Was that yeah, fine. What happened? Uh, I don't know. There was there was some kind of like weird piston. <laughs> it looked like it was it, it didn't you down, Don't worry. But about you it. just you just ripped the whole thing off of the. Off There's the like plane. the remains of like the piston mechanic underneath it. <laughs> just like, yeah. <laughs> it's no big deal. Where's the will? There's a way. I'm glad you're okay. Yeah. But we should be careful. Yeah. Yes. Yes. As you're like taking it back, you notice like inherently because you're holding on to this thing as you're swimming. This is empty. Wow. This is a trap. It was literally just a greed trap. However, I got an empty chest. Treasure chest get. Yeah. I don't know what you can do with that, but it is technically something. Now, no Would I be able to go down that. and get the uh, crystals one? That's certainly possible. 
However, however, I think we shouldn't push it. We should always push it to the limit. One second. However, by activating that trap, you have... The door opens, and a person walks out. Uh, they are wearing what appear to be, like, ordinary clothes, but they have, like, a strange sort of diving helmet with purple on it. Um, this diving helmet is antithetical to the rest of them. They look kind of, like, point with, like, grayish skin. And they look at you. They close the door. <laughs> Come back, you coward. Oh. Who was... What? Is that door locked now? No. It was locked. It got... They opened the padlock from the other side. They're very scared. Gruel, get that person. Gruel, do you open the door? What if they don't want to get get? <laughs> <laughs> What, is, okay, what do they choice. look like again, Pog? Uh, they have grayish skin. They're wearing what appear to be like normal looking clothes. They have this strange like helmet on. Uh, am I able to see like their uh, their really bulbous black eyes and they have no nose, just slits for... <laughs> I'm just kidding. They're not aliens. But can I see their face at all? The helmet obscures it all. The helmet like largely obscures, but you can kind of see through like the visor to see that they are... Some sort of like light born, anyways. Ah, uh, okay. Um, I can assume they speak common. Um, uh, okay, let's see. How do I want to go about opening the door? Can I, like, I guess so, that'd be Excel? I want to, like, open the door, but be ready to quickly slam it closed if they have, like, a weapon out or something. I think that'd be Excel, yeah. Okay. Uh, that ain't, it's not the best Excel. Um, <laughs> reactions, yeah. Uh, controlled, risky, or desperate? At this point, this is risky. I don't see anything else making sense. It's not really desperate. I mean, okay. You could make it desperate if you want. Alright, um, you can end up in a desperate position or a complication occurs. Uh, sure, complication. Okay, the complication is that when you open the door and then you try to, like, slam it closed, um, immediately there is a person with a sword and sh uh, They are wearing, like, this strange-looking purple armor with the same visor, but they have a sword and shield. And they immediately, like, get in the door to stop you from closing it. Ooh, put their foot in the door. They're like a salesman. Uh, Hold on. Hello, I don't recall ever inviting you into our mission. Please, pray tell, who are you? Uh, Gruel, like, what just moves aside and points at point, Taren. Ah, countryman, hello. You are not part of our mission. Who do you report to? And point at this point, like, looks down at them. Uh, mate, I don't know who you are. <laughs> Fucking hell, these are Tutharians. Tutharians, uh, the enemy. We must crush them. The, the enemy? Huh? Are you part of the Hinkleyan military? Uh, no. No. Yeah, not, not technically. That enemy is a strong word. To um, him, it's more like stranger. I see. Mate, let me be honest. You have somehow pulled our trap off its, well, off the, the piston. I, I didn't design the trap myself. I don't understand what the trap is, just that it was placed there to catch any would-be treasure seekers. By the fact that you're still alive and that you've pulled it off, you are evidently stronger than the average. Yeah, could have, that could have hurt someone. Yeah, I got I to gotta find chest out of it. It's great. Yes, uh, that is the intention, uh, Janasi. Um, sorry, I don't have your name. I'm Zephyr. Uh, these are my friends Gruel, Duggle, and Ovin, and Point. Hello? Uh, of what clan? Uh, we're from Mistfell. The Mistfell clan. Mistfell, that's that small town by the border, I remember. 
I mean, we're kind of near the border, I suppose. I see. As for myself, I am Follis Lachinus. You may call me Follis. I am in charge of this whole place. Uh, Gruel points to, like, the hallway and says, uh, Orc statue. Who is? Orc st uh, you're referring to the statue of Zilgresh Mofruksha. I'm afraid that is Tuvarian state secret. I can't go into much more detail. I'm afraid I'm going to have to ask you to leave. This is imperial business. Is, Can we inquire how we is, are supposed to leave? We entered through a not ideal yeah. solution. Yes. Is this imperial territory? I would not bother yourself with these questions, mate. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I take that as a no. So what this authority do you have to tell us to leave? Dominion. This is it? area is currently occupied by the Tutharian military. We're the strongest military in the world. Now, I don't know well? where you get this self-confidence in yourself. I think it's admirable, but I would not go to war with one of the largest countries and most powerful empires in all of history. Unless it were for a friend. Isn't that right, Point? Point at this <laughs> point is just like... Looking around, like, what the hell's going on? Uh, mate, I didn't know that the military would be here, but... I mean, if you, uh, it seems like there's just a few of them. I, I think maybe we can take them. We help? We help explore Temple? Yeah, how, how about that? I'm sure this is a dangerous place. What, what was the name you, of um the knights you, that are employed by... Salcro. Uh, the Viridian. Viridian eyes. You see at this you, point, yeah. another person walks in and kind of looks hearing Are the commotion. Viridian knights. Viridian knights. Viridian knights. What do you know about the Viridian knights? I asked you a question. Please answer it. I mean, obviously, I am not part of the Viridian knights. I am an imperial guard. However, you apparently know about the Viridian knights. What do you know about them? Uh, well, if you were part of the Viridian Knights, we'd be obligated to stop you. Well, I have it on good authority that I am not part of the Viridian Knights. And at this point, he kind of, um... He takes off his helmet a little bit and pulls out, like, a family crest. Nuggle has full-on pulled his hat down over his eyes at this point. This is... <laughs> This is not a great Duggle situation. You claim to be part of the Hinklin military? No, I'm part of the Tutharian military. A far more powerful and important military, and one that will soon control the continent. But this is the Hinklin Dominion. For you now. Know. You've... No. They For the foreseeable ideas. future. He uh, uh, gives you like a he gives you like a playful wink. Are you saying that Tutheria is going to attack the Hinklian Dominion? Eventually, you see, Tutheria was given to us by the gods. The six have blessed and cursed us. Our punishment was merely a method that we could become stronger, so that we may claim our rightful place. Such is the doctrine of the Six. We create civilization where there is none. We tame the wilderness. We are the eternal underdogs, the lightborn champions of Theseus. We are arbiters of chaos, and we do what is necessary for the rest of the world. We are the chosen. To Theria forever! And you hear, like, cheers coming from the other room. I don't like How many people, people does it sound like are cheering? Uh, go ahead and give me a sense check, Open. Oh, Jesus. Okay. Don't worry. There's no penalties for failing this one. All right. What's my uh, position? 
This position is controlled because there's no penalties for failing this. How many people cheering? Roll. Oh, I it would have been great if I didn't suck at sense. Hooray. Um, you are somewhat like having difficulty hearing. Um, can I give him it's echoing and shit? You can, Zephyr. Yep. And to take the six? Yep, yep. Okay, okay. Uh, Zephyr. I'll spend one effort. Uh, it is echoing, oh. and you use your wind to sort of suppress the echo. Yeah. And as a result, you are able to determine that there are an additional three people in the back. Guys, these guys are enemies of the state. Don't yeah. what do you say. I, I don't like them. I think we're obligated to stop them. We go to rest of temple. You stay here. Gruel says to them. I think that sounds like a fair he puts trade. puts his helmet back on. I'm afraid I cannot give you any of what you are requesting. This is a state secret by the Tutharian military. Any further investigation is prohibited. Uh, but state secret yeah. in... Not in Tutheria land. Yeah. This area is that doesn't matter to them. By the Tutherian military and is considered part of her sovereign soil. We leave, come back with, uh, with, with the Hinkley army? Roll initiative. <laughs> <laughs> There's no initiative to roll. There's no initiative. But I will opt myself into combat. I will also opt myself into combat. I will go AFK. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. Zephyr is, is blanked out. He's Good, luck. This guy. Good luck. <laughs> Good luck, team. Hey, they're not that strong, right? Right? They're not. Their God bestowed them land. <laughs> and they're, they're doing this. My fist. They have a divine missive to reclaim what is rightfully theirs. Ugh. That is not no, Zephyr's. They are stone, but beneath my fist. All right. As you say this, they immediately take offense to that, and you see they both draw their sword. Ooh. All right. Pathetic. Uh. Can't just go into another country and declare that this is part of another country. Come on. That's kind of how conquest works. I mean, yeah, so we're stopping the conquest. I mean, aren't they not like the... pretty deep? Pretty deep behind the <laughs> They are. Yeah. They're not even anywhere near to Syria. It's an enclave. No jurisdiction here. All right, we'll just knock them out. Whatever. They'll wake up a few hours later. Um, I'll put them with the where the chest used to be. Oh no! <laughs> My goodness. <laughs> <laughs> That's so the trap is inside. <laughs> it's, it's a pile of bodies. Who's going first? Uh, uh, can I go? Sure, go ahead. Yeah, go. Uh, uh, cool. Blue. uh cool. uh, arrow. Mm. All right. Um. Okay. I kind of want to just close the door and walk back a bit. <laughs> That's what I really want to do because I don't want it. You should hit oh, him no. and then do that. If you I'm afraid yeah. you cannot, as Folus is keeping the door open. Remember? Uh, okay. okay. All right. Um. Yeah, like, okay. It's open, and he's standing in front of it. That's two. What's this? Uh, okay. I mean, I don't want to just use warding wind again at a choke point. I don't want that to be the thing I do every fight. So I'm gonna. Try not to. I mean, I, I can also do defensive stuff, but okay. Yeah. I am going. Oh, I've got to an idea of what I could do. Pass Blood Grove right here, and I think oh, I will. Nice. Actually, I could do it. I could do it where he is, right where he Last is. Last one area extend. of undergrowth. So it should extend out to this way. I love this ability. This one's so cool. This way, this way, and this way. Immediate attacks against allies and allies. Someone's in the air game plus one curse. Oh, yeah, that was good. And you can make it grow. Oh, it grows if you defeat enemies in it. Yeah. Or you can give it your own blood. Okay. Grow. Blast one area of undergrowth. Oh, it doesn't create the plant. 
You get fifty percent of reach max HP. That is terrible. I don't know when it, that would ever be worth it. Uh, if it's already really big, maybe. Maybe. Uh. Okay. Um. That's two actions. Okay, and I will. What is Tom really? Let's see. Will it? Will uh, it that's just saying what? like what the range of the ability is. Oh, I, see. I so guess in not... the book. Yeah. Got to list it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Gotcha. So, uh, like from MySpace. Tom from MySpace. The yep. creator of the game. You've got talent one on it. We uh, think so, but it's actually Tom right. Bombadil. <laughs> yeah, same person. You wouldn't, like, not many people know that. Tom Bombadil made MySpace. Uh, end of my turn there. All right. I think it was a different Tom, personally. Maybe it's short for tomato. True. Okay, first steps forward is going to use a brutal slash on Oven. Don't do that, that's rude. That will in fact hit. Then nice. activates hold the line. Uh, so I take 10 damage because I didn't get to set anything up here. Yeah. Yep. But, you have but armor, this is right? reduced. Oh, right, yeah. So. Oh. so it's seven damage. Use aura two until the next turn. Resistance against melee attack. Okay. Cute. Point. Swims backward, pulls out his giant, super high-tech, custom-modified Tutharian heavy archibus. Wait, he's got Tutharian tech? Jesus. He is Tutharian. Oh. Point is Tutharian. Is he? He yep. just didn't see, he didn't want to, like, say that he's with the oh. person that claims to be a prince. With no line of succession, or whatever. Oh god, I'm supporting this guy. <laughs> uh, he is just because he's like Tutharian like ethnicity does not mean he's part of the Tutharian military right I mean sure yeah he's, yeah, he's not from Tutharia he's with the orphan no the he orphan. literally is from Tutharian he's from Thaxted in fact yeah he's an orphan um, from Tutharia who then went to Thaxted as a result of being okay. an orphan Like his parents are to there. Right, right. I, I've got. Hmm. Yep, got it. Got it straight in my head now. So did. Foe oh, is vulnerable. Vulnerable. I mean, they're only taking half damage because they got resistance. The half against melee. I against think I was melee. range attack. Oh, down. you're right. Yeah. True. 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 Fullest at this point sees this. Countrymen. You work with these fiends! Nah, mate. I work with my friends. That's yeah. right. Owned. Dad! Illegal. Close the fucking door on him. <laughs> Is that area is difficult terrain, don't forget. Blood Grove? It yeah. is. But I mm -hmm. guess he uh, might have enough. Yeah, he still has enough, actually. Really? Uh, no, does not actually. It would just be here. Tragic. X. He's a skirmisher, right? He yeah. Go dying. Oh, that explains it. Wait, never mind. I'm wrong about being. Uh, the swordmaster, as they're like trying to traverse forward, you can see like there is like. A shadow in their armor uh, which reveals itself to have eyes like their shadow literally comes alive and pushes back and cuts at the grass in front of them their shadow is like moving against the water to do so like against the light then they step up in front Ooh. 
He cleared a lot of distance. The other people back there probably gen two of them. Hmm. Probably no one else that can actually get up and attack unless they're doing range attacks. Uh, he was like all the way back here, I think. Pretty far, so. Yeah, he probably used all of his actions. For the Empire! Oof. Oh, he's still attacking, Jesus. Yeah, he just did his movement, I think. Yeah, can't make it's a so heavy far. attack, though. Through you difficult can dash terrain. four before the attack. There you go. That's what did it. Dash four? What the frick? <laughs> so good. Oh, the, the Empire. Watch out. If made from stealth. Was that from stealth? Uh, this guy has the ability to ignore difficult terrain. Um, which might be... You have not seen anyone else his power. Oh, okay, so the dash wouldn't matter. He'd make it anyways. Okay. Right. Oof. Ten damage. Six damage. Uh, six damage on ten. <laughs> Sorry, I was looking at D10. Okay. Oh, I don't shoot. All right, everyone else. Uh, I'll go. Okay. I mean, if I knew everyone else was going, I should have just taken a fucking slow turn. <laughs> you can oh. still take the slow turn. I think that's fine. It doesn't change anything, right? I, I don't, you know, I don't think there's any benefit to me taking turn. For... Um. I need yeah, to take a I'll... turn so I can actually get my defensive abilities up. <laughs> uh, no, let, let Oven go. There's not really much I could do. Okay. Or, uh... Yeah. Because I'm going to do this, and then I'm going to set up Overkill as well. Okay, he sets And get in a central position. Enabled. So then my turn will end, and a bunch of stuff will happen. Uh, oh. Okay. I'll gain Vigilance, and so I've got Resistance 2, and yeah. Next turn, I'll get big bonuses. All right, Duggle. Did the enemy go? Uh, uh, I need notes. Um, yep. Thank you. The enemies have gone. There's only two of them. I thought it was four. You heard more voices deeper in. So remember, there's this person, but there's civilian. They're not fighting here. Huh? They're wearing normal-looking clothes with the yeah. visor. Oh, yeah. They're, they were wearing armor. Um, this is very close quarters. It is. All right. Uh, shift notes down there. And I'm going to shoot uh, Icy f Sphere infused through Folus there. Okay. So select myself, target him. And. I've I've got a boon on this, right? Because he's in that AoE. Yep. He also has vulnerability because of the shot from point. Yep. Yep. Um. Blood Grove is so good. That would have missed eh. a room for Blood Grove. I did infuse this, okay. so that's 10 damage. There's a pit under him. 11 damage. Oh, 11 damage, that's right. And I'm also... Um, Okay. 
All right. So he's he, Oven, and the Swordmaster are frostbitten. That's probably he fine. was already frostbitten, so he takes the damage. Oh, he takes two damage because vulnerable. Group. Man, Dougal is just going to shuffle back a bit, and that is my turn. All right. So, so that's me. I'm the only one left. Um, I think I'm going to... Yeah, uh, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to uh, use electromagnetism on the sword master. Let me open that up. So now he's electrified. And then I will cast a uh, warding wind like this Ooh. uh I'll, I'll infuse it because that's five squares i want to get this whole thing so i'll infuse it one to get here there that's six squares We need five, but sure. Oh, I can't do five. It's it's in uh, increments of two. It's four, six, eight, ten. Yeah. Um. And I'll teleport to here. And that is my turn. Next round, who would like to go first? I'm gonna take a slow turn. All right. Uh, do you think you can beat this guy solo one turn? Or, or you can go through the wind and he's stuck there. That's that's what I'm thinking. Put the guy in the jail. <laughs> yeah, he's he's totally trapped over there. If you want to just go through. Uh, yeah, one second. Oh, I'm just thinking. Hit him uh, in the uh, I basically have wall of force. I guess electrified people, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, sure. I can go if no one else uh, wants to then. Yeah. I'm taking a slow turn, so I'm going last no matter what. Okay, I will... I am going to... I will mark Oven with... Throwing... Uh, is this even... I'll probably just uh never mind they'll probably just it's probably not worth doing that okay i will go ahead and <clears throat> move first i'll go uh one two three uh assuming no provokes okay you probably don't have vigilance i think the tank guy is this guy well i will oh. yeah. place a He's spelling plant it. here, oh. I guess. Yeah, okay, I'll place a plant here. Kin Chewer. What is this freaking ability name? This is. Okay. Choose the kin. Uh, oh, nice. I can move. Okay, cool. Uh, here, and I will. I guess I'll just. Uh, well, is there even a chance of him going through the wall? Uh, 
He might have an ability. No, if if unless he has an ability that can bypass it, he's stuck there. He could dash, I think, as part of an attack if he stealthed, though. Um, well, he can't go through the wall. He's electrified, so he automatically fails the save to go through it. But if oh, he could teleport, I think he could get through it. But oh, dash I don't know only. if he has that. I see. Okay. I will... Uh, okay, well, I'll have the plat do two piercing damage to Folis. I think it just gets to do it, right? Let me read that again. Cool. Yeah, a bite of foe, then two? it needs to make a save. He's vulnerable, so is that three damage? It is. Very good. And, yeah, he, has, uh, he makes it, I guess. Uh, and then I have one. Is it makes or beats for the save? Uh, yeah, must save or be a mobile. Ten or higher. Next. Ten or higher, not eleven or higher. Or sorry, it is eleven or higher, right? Because it's above a ten. I yeah. think it's above. I think 50, it's 50. 50. Yeah, that makes sense. So right. I think it's a fail. So he's a mobile in a pit in a blood grove. <laughs> <That's boot. laughs> um, I will. Yeah, I'll just uh. Rip man's law, just uh, I can do a ranged attack on Folus. Okay, uh, nine damage, ten, and oh, yeah, he's vulnerable. All right, pretty good. Uh, and that's my turn. Swordmaster thinks he could do something. Let's see if he can do anything. The Swordmaster, I mean, at this point, uh, she's clearly pissed off, looks at Zephyr. Um, you can see through the wind, she takes her sword out, makes like a throat cutting gesture, and as she <laughs> does so, uh, you are marked. Okay. And you can see her sword begins to, like, literally come alight. Okay. Is that it? Yeah? It gets a free crit and it's stealth from just you, though. If they yeah, can just from get me. To. If they oh, can what, get no, 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 no. While if foe is marked, the Swordmaster gains stealth at the start of their turn. Deals. I think it's just stealth at the start of their next turn. Yeah. So they, yeah, we can't even see it. Uh, no one can. But I was like, start of the next turn. You can. They just. You can't target them directly unless you've got true strike or something. Yeah, like you, 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 you at that at most you could do fray, I guess. That's what that means. But, unless you have true strike. Yeah. The most intimidating possible turn. That is scary. It might get a crit if we don't burst them down. Joke's on them. I get true strike because I didn't attack last turn. Oof. Okay. I'll take care of the one next to you, Elvin, or do you want me to go after the one with the sword? Yeah, if you want to... Either or. If you want to fish him off, that's fine. Right on. Actually, it's a good move to finish him off, yeah. I don't suppose you'd be willing to stand down, would you, Swordmaster? For the Emperor! For the Emperor! Uh, I didn't think so. It's... Mate, those Tutharian gods are crazy. Uh, Point just says this, like, completely nonchalantly, steps... Pulls out his pistol as he reloads the other gun. Like, literally, he's reloading the gun. He pulls out the pistol with one hand. Like, does a, like, flare bartending to, like, throw um, the shot into the air and put it in his musket. Shoots the other guy and then... Which one did they shoot? Uh, aiming at mm -hmm. Folis here. Okay. This is two boon. Finish him. Uh, I think one bonus damage. 
One bonus damage because he's vulnerable, yeah. yeah. Uh, so he takes one more damage. That's not a bonus damage. Yeah. It would be it would be bonus damage if he was electrified. All right. Crit. This guy's retired. Dash and gain stealth. That guy's super dead. Uh, and as Point like just takes this guy out, you see suddenly he just like turns a dot, and a cloud of smoke appears, and he's gone. Nice. All right, Folis is retired, so does not get a turn. Solid. Everyone it else hasn't gone other than me. Uh, we've not um, seen Duggle and we have not seen Zephyr. Zephyr or yeah. Ovid. So yeah, I, I took a slow turn, so you guys have to go before me. Okay. Um. <laughs> um. I'll. I can go. Also, the Blood Grove uh, grows another blast one. <laughs> oh. Whoops. Sorry. Oh, it, wait, this guy's now in the now. blood grove. Yeah. Actually, it can get really big and go to blast three. Oh, oh yeah. That is huge, yeah. <laughs> oh, that's really bad for this guy. I, I don't think he's going to survive. <laughs> See another turn, personally. Well, he might, and then I can't really target him. Uh, but what I am going to do... I'm going to hit him real hard. I think. Take notes over there. And... This guy's branded, so all attacks have plus one boon against him. Just so you know. No, but I, I can't target him because he's stealthed. Unless I go into melee, he's which not I stealthed. will not. He is not stealthed oh, not? until the start of his... Yeah, until the start of her next turn, she is not stealthed. Oh. oh, well then. Um, we're going to do this the simple way, which is well, simple-ish. Move notes over there so that I can icy sphere her without catching um, Oven in the tumult blast. So, uh, abilities, icy sphere. And tumult, because I am infusing this. Mm -hmm. And targeting from notes as usual. Two. One boon? One boon. Whoops. Um. That hits. That'll be 11 damage. No, I, I rolled from notes. Let me re-roll the damage, because I've got a different damage die than okay. that, I think. Yeah, go ahead and re-roll. We'll take the higher of the uh, two. I know, I know what I can do now. Uh. Hey, you hit again. Holy shit, that's a lot of damage. Oh my you god. You might not even survive for me to do my slow turn. <laughs> and... That's also uh, a damage from mm -hmm. Tumult, unless you already did that. Yep, okay. already did that. And, and a pit. So, nice. get fucked, now they, short master. Now get, another... Pit. Pit. That's another boon to hit them because yep. you're higher ground than them. Jeez. No, pit, pits don't change the elevation. Really? No, they do. It just it means you can't move. You have to spend your movement uh, to get out. They count as lower one lower elevation for all space when inside. There you go. Oh, oh, never mind. I'd be very weird if you were inside a pit and not lower than something else. Listen, I have I have played rights in both of these games. I don't have to go into pits. I just fly <laughs> over them. Fair. I make the pits, which means I probably should know the rules, but... Hitmaster. <laughs> oh my god, All he's right. near death. Yeah, you're just going to kill him. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, Zephyr? No, I think... Oh, uh, no, if open... Uh, I... I took a slow turn. I literally can't go. I don't think I can hit unless I... You have, like, two close. boons to it, I think. I okay, have three um, boons against him, so, like, he's... Can like... I occupy the same space as the plant? It's tiny, right? You can. Okay. They usually say... In the you can also hit that... adjacent. Uh, like, you can hit diagonally. That's still allowed. 
Oh, I got range just one. the basic yeah. attacks. I, yeah. I forgot about those. Okay. Because I was thinking I only had Bolt. And I was like, how am I going to get Bolt without hitting anyone? Because it's a line from me. Okay, uh, yeah, I'll do a... Just a heavy ranged attack is what you can do. Yeah, heavy ranged attack. Yeah. Um... Yeah, so how do I... Okay, target. Number of damage dice, two. One boon, right? Because it's marked. Uh, two boons. Two boons, then a pick. Two, two, two boons. Higher ground and, and blood grove. Yeah. And blood grove. Too. All right. Crit. How do you want... Uh, you want to describe this one, or should I? Uh... I imagine it happens not too long after I ask. After they respond, you know, glory to the to the Iron Empire. I just call a bolt down, zap them, and they just fall unconscious. Bop. Knocked out. You know, their arms just do that flexing thing. Hello, I am Research Commander Americus. Hello, is that the person with the helmet? I mean you no harm. Then you can surrender. Puts down his sword and his shield. Please spare Damn the it. lives of our researchers. We're not going to kill them. I wanted to hit him so bad. I did what nothing you... that fight. What are you doing here? We are investigating. This is the site of one of Bale's crash ships from the Calamity. The Reality, as it is called. However, this area is ridden with traps. And the lower levels where the ship, or what is left of the ship that we can see, is filled with the undead. We have not been able to progress further and are awaiting reinforcements. When you came in, we thought you were the reinforcements initially as you came through our secret entrance. Oh, uh, God. We're well. here to take control of this operation. I see. Will you allow us to keep our research and send it back to the motherland? No, absolutely not. Uh, gross, uh, no, uh, you can keep research. It's fine. I assure you, our Maybe research we... is benign. I apologize for the actions of the Void Walkers before me. However, you must understand that the rage virus is intense. But the, the what? The rage virus? Oh, shit, zombie virus. Uh, mate, the rage virus. So all the advanced Void Walkers and such in the military are... Their minds are screwed with by the Void Entities to such an extreme degree that they're basically mind-controlled. That's why I said, mate, like, the Swordmaster that you saw, they, they're all fucking crazy, and I apologize for saying yeah. that, but... They're not dead, but unconscious. <laughs> That's why I don't really like um, the Tudarian military is... All the weird stuff that they do to themselves, I mean, past a certain point, it's like a... It's unnatural. How much of them is them at that point? Oh, do they do it willingly? Yes, everyone willingly signs in with the military. And whether or not you choose to accept augmentation is a personal choice. I am unaugmented myself. I, I mean, that's better than the alternative, but maybe should not, should still not be a thing that is being done. We are attempting, to some extent, to quell the rage of the ghosts that we use to power some of the armor. However, you must understand that the sin used in the creation of a ghost inherently causes some sort of anger, hatred to the users. 
We call this the rage virus. It is as of yet an unsolved problem in Tidarian magic technology. It's the negative feelings of the ghosts that powering the armor. That is basically. correct. Okay. They're an efficient and useful fuel source. Could you please uh, rescind the vines? One of my employees has. Sorry, one of my colleagues has passed out from fear and is entangled in them. Uh, Gruel would uh, just uh, get rid of everything the plant, the vines. Thank you. And we've been told that the military of Hinklia are a bunch of bloodthirsty savages. I mean, well, we're not exactly purely military. Our goals are also diplomatic. I see. Torchbearers. Torchbearers. That is much more pleasant than what dealings that we have had with your military. The conditions well, that you put your war wizards through are deplorable. What what conditions hey, do you speak of? We 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 literally went. We we saw the conditions. It's yeah. Um, the um. That's, that That's uh, Larrington. Um, Larrington. Larrington is clearly uh, like a standout, different case than the usual. Yeah, that's. Um, there, there's no way you can tell me that the standard uh, way to train is Larrington's method. There's no way. I do not believe that is the case. However, this is all the information that we've been given. I suspect this has to do with the propaganda that is provided to my superior officers. Or I suppose I am now the commanding officer as you've killed them. Uh, I think they're uh, all alive. They're, they're, they're alive. We keep alive. We do not kill. The propaganda we've been given is truly atrocious. I apologize for any misgivings I had on your personality. Yeah, I like pretending to be sympathetic or is he actually sympathetic go ahead and give me a sense check Elvin. oh god why am i the one to ask these questions uh because okay. i believe them all right i'm assuming this is risky <laughs> i wouldn't ask these questions yep i i, I fail For it is hard to read the facial expressions of somebody who has like a space helmet on Fair. Um, Take two string. I guess everything else aside, um, you are kind of running a military expedition inside another country's borders on um, a ship that belonged to Bale? Yes. Without, you know, secretly like covertly that's um i'm not a diplomat or military but that seems like a thing that really is not acceptable by literally any country's definitions and uh you should probably get out of here yeah. i really don't think Military or no, we can allow you to stay. Follis is... How do I put... Bravado does not reflect on the research operation that we are intending to do here. We are investigating a group called the Harbingers that apparently have some ties to Bill pre-Calamity. And so, we have investigated this area to the best That's of our ability. However, going deeper in, you will find that this area is quite literally infested with undead to the point of further progress being impossible. If it is your intention to investigate deeper, I would advise caution. With that said, you certainly are capable in a fight as you have defeated our entire combat wing. That, that's your entire combat wing? There were nothing. I, I don't think they were really expecting anyone to show up. I kind of yeah. got, I guess I got lucky seeing their secret entrance. We had two Who put up that illusion, by the way? Adrenaline. Uh, that was, that was myself. myself. I am one of the best really? magic technology experts. It was very good. The only weakness it had was that it was in 
a very beautiful place, so people couldn't help but look at it. You know, so we were somewhere. I don't know. It, yeah, crystal it's, clear water. People are going to stare into that. Is, is is this really advice you should be giving? Zephyr? Well, my my thoughts on the matter here are that I'm not really one for borders, but but I recognize that as part of a military extension, they must, and that they are violating that border right now. So while personally, I wouldn't let it slide, I, I realize that what they are doing is in their system wrong. I would also like to point out that our research facility is something that is independent of the Tiberian military. We were merely assigned guards from the Tiberian military to ensure that our operation is successful. You still okay? I'm I'm getting a clearer. Uh, no, no, I no, because Tiberian's got this problem with sin used to power stuff. You know, the usage of ghosts in the first place is you know murky ethically, but. Your goal is to make it a safer thing to use. You're putting words in their mouth. That is a no, that's what they said. That is a wonderful thing that some research wings are doing. We are investigating the Harbinger. I thought you said you were here to investigate the rage virus. No, no, he just talked about the rage virus because okay. they have the rage virus. Sorry, They're I was here. distracted by a, a puddle. They're here on Harbinger research, which, okay. you know, great research. Two different things, two different things. But maybe ask. I, I, I know that well, Miss Phil Polymagic. What? what? Do you look at the research and see if it's, if it's anything dangerous is in it, or if it truly is a benign scientific operation? You will aid us in our investigation, and we will not take no for an answer. That's fine. I, I, I'm commanding you. That, well, that's, yeah. I have no ground to stand on, and I would certainly <laughs> lose in any armed combat that we have. Right. Yeah, so if you would, uh, yeah, share what you know about the lower levels. All right, so if you would go deeper in. He is taking Sense. you on a controlled tour. Nice. This will I was like, if I was going to have to roll for that, I was going to... guys. <laughs> it takes us on a Willy Wonka tour. Be careful. Be careful in that room. Uh, here, let me bring the light. Let me explain everything that is happening here. Where is everyone? We went down. I'm, can you see without me by? Or Douglas, do I have to really keep on top of that? Since you have study here... Um, can you roll for Americus, uh, which is just his study rolls? Uh, sure. Uh, narrative. Cool. I'm strong arming them to hell. They will come. You see, on. there's like two Tutharian researchers here who are just like scared. I love that. Like, Ovin's like ordering them to do like the exact same thing I was about to ask them to. <laughs> so I'm like, well, the I'm not same asking thing's happening. Yeah, the same thing's happening. They're going along with right. it. I don't need to step in here. This is, I believe, the some sort of a blocking mechanism that is used to advance the upper floors of the reality. Let me just go ahead and unlock this for you. Oh yeah, the reality being the name of this ship. That is correct. So, if you look to your left, there is a room that appears to have some sort of a combination trap and communication. Though, whatever it is supposed to communicate with is long since gone. There is no reason to use this device unless you would like to shock yourself. You Count down room, to Oven doing that. <laughs> over at it. This room is the most dangerous room by far. Which which room? Can you ping that to the bottom right? right. Um, That's this right? one. Okay. Yeah. Now the room to the left is some sort of a communication device, but what it is communicating with is irrelevant. The room to the right can be used to. I'm moving my token. I'm not actually moving there. I just want to see this stuff. The room to the right 
uh, has some sort of ability to interface with the statue further up ahead. I believe that you saw it, as I've heard you made some sort of reference. We could only get the name. Uh, Zogresh Mufraksa. Yes, Zogresh, I do not believe, is related to the Harbingers. However, he was part of the crew that originally went on Bale's Day of Sedeli to fight the gods. Can't see anything. Yes, it is quite dark in here. I would recommend a torch. My helmet has a built-in light on it that I can use to see in the dark. Here. I'm trying to stand as center-ish as I can. <laughs> now, while this, while this room does, in fact, in the bottom right, this room does allow you to interface with the statue of Zogresh. Unfortunately, it tends to psychologically traumatize those that interface with it. Uh, I would not recommend using this device unless you are very confident in your ability to discern reality from fiction and oh, to well, separate your mind. <coughs> Oven, are you, what if, are you uh, using it? <laughs> uh, how Oven, do I use it? As soon as you go it? into the room, literally the idea of interfacing with it is enough oh. to interface with it. It is a psychic crystal. What would I do with a statue? What would I tell a statue to do? I was going to ask him, what have other people done? <laughs> what have other people seen? All right, Oven, you find yourself in like a strange, misty world where it's sort of like what you're seeing right now, um, but it appears a lot more pristine. Like the... The Tudarian troops have done a decent job cleaning this place up, but clearly not enough. Um, you are seeing sort of a past version of the offense, and you see the real Zogresh, an orc, and he says something to you in Orkamoa, and you respond in turn. Please give me an endure check. This is desperate. Uh, I would like to spend an effort to make this a plus one. Go ahead. <laughs> Okay. Uh, desperate. Modifier. Plus one. Okay. Hell yeah! I'm confident! <laughs> Hell yeah! You push away from this effect completely. Um, you are not Zogresh. You are not the person whose memories are entrapped in this crystal. Uh, and you don't know why such a crystal would exist in the first place. You are Oven Stonecrusher. That guy is a chump. Yeah. The crystal completely shattered. You hear a click from up ahead, deeper in, Zephyr. From the statue room. Hey, sorry guys, I kind of broke it, I think. Can I... What have you done? Well... That psionic crystal must be incredibly valuable. Uh, I, I don't know. It's like, said things at me, and Oven's I was like... just are, good at these things. Are you alright? Are you okay? Uh, I heard a click. Are there, are there any traps in this hallway up here that you set up? We never actually got around to using the front hallway. No, there are no traps. The trap is, if you try to break the lock, we would come around and encircle you. Ah. Uh, well, I, I heard a click up here. Uh, uh, Doug, you want to come with me? Sure. 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 Hey. Oh. This will advance the dungeon Try. clock by one, as it will take some time. However, great rewards. <gasps> the chest oh, of the awesome. statue has opened, and inside there is a beautiful cloak. This this statue? The one I'm up by? The statue of Zogreth. Where's What chest? Like, like his, his literally chest. The chest. Physical the chest. It oh, opens oh, up wow, okay. like a... His statue ribcage. And inside you can see there is this beautiful looking cloak. Uh, I'll go and pick it out and just kind of hold it out like you do with, like, any kind of shirt. The cloak appears to billow in the wind, um, but there is no wind, oh. and it is billowing towards Oven. Oh, well, I think that's just me. Um, <laughs> I, like, I gesture to my always billowing robes and hair. <laughs> so, I, I, so I don't think I really need this. I mean, Oven's the one that opened it, so here, you check it out. I look you know, at it. It seems to. If I let go of it, does it keep billowing? 
Uh, when you let go of it, it floats and almost like drapes itself around Oven. Oven, what color is this cloak? I didn't do that. You you didn't do that? No. It moved on its own. It's It's got to be like a white with like a light blue trim. Right on. All right. This is the troll hide. Ooh. <gasps> it's oh, shit. A relic. relic. Super, super good. Yeah, I saw you post that before. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, like just getting vigor every time I don't attack. Pretty good. Especially if I upgrade it. It's like it was made for you. Is that the same kind of, is that the same garment he is wearing in the statue? That is Zilbrush's Divinium Cloak. We thought it was lost to the ages. I see. Finders Keepers. No, and it's chosen you as its owner. Finders Keepers does not apply with Divinium. Oh, I meant us as a group. I meant you guys couldn't have it. <laughs> My, uh, congratulations, I've not seen, well, I mean, I've seen cars decked out head to toe in it, but I've not had my share of Divinium items. I'm gonna say that one's yours, and I'll take the next one if it lets me. How's that? Uh, yeah, that, that was part of how the agreement went. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, you, you get say. I don't think you could have this even if you wanted it, though. Yeah. It seems to prefer Zephyr's, uh, not Zephyr, Oven. Oven's demeanor. I have a feeling you have something very specific in mind. That's right. You see, any Divinium item is soul bound to a certain type of person. Only that person can use it. That's strange. Oh, like in World of Warcraft. The item itself is divine and has a mind of its own. You are chosen by the relic as much as it chooses you. And you, in turn, reap the benefits. I suppose I just said a tautology. But I want to stress enough that to have been chosen by Zilbresh's legendary garment, that must make you a legend as well, in the making. I believe Naturally. so, anyways. We don't know much about Zogrash, other than he was one of the commanders of the Deus Adela. That's why we had a statue pulled off the ship and moved for transportation. We had a feeling there was something to it, but whenever we tried to move it further away from the crystal, the crystal would bite back. And you see, like, Americas is just going on and on and on delaying. Dougal, you get the sense he's telling the damn truth. The whole truth and nothing but the truth. He's, like, just a nerd. Yeah. Yeah, I... I understand. You, you, you gotta get it all out there. Um, but, uh... We do kind of need to... Oh. Keep moving... Well, you said this room to the left is dangerous. Yes, and there's no. no reason to be there. It is completely worthless. Now, the door to the left, if we go down deeper here... Hold on, can I do a sense on that? No. You can. What do you mean, no? <laughs> what do you mean, no? Uh, I, I, I like an insight, is what I mean. What? what like, I oh, there's going, nothing interesting here. Moving on. Ooh, okay. Already forgotten what the man's told you. Huh. Uh, They're like trying to steer us away from it. Clearly, uh, we're, we're back in control, right? Yes. Oh. Hey. This is a crystal that is connected to something. It has a trap associated with it, but you are able to like look at how this is set up, um, because you're like innately connected to like electricity and the weather and such. You're able to see that there is an electricity trap set up here. It seems to be connected to the electricity trap that you set up earlier, which you imagine oh, connects to the reality. Okay. There is, in fact, I, a trap I, I was... here. But 
you have a full success. There is something more to this crystal, and you get the sense when these people are talking that they are telling the truth. They're not lying to you, but they don't understand the full extent of what this crystal is. It's not just a communication device. The electricity seems to be harnessable to some extent, but you don't know what the extent would be. It's a... It's like Come on, there's got to be outlet. more of this. It's a power source of some kind. Rule number the Deus one. Adeli were... How big were they? Never trust the enemy. The Deus Adeli were quite large. Now, if we okay. would move along, please, please don't investigate that. It had to be some electricity trap, and I don't want yeah, it to be zapped. They're not, they're not wrong about that, Oven. It's, it's like what hit me earlier. Uh, above board, if you'd like to try to investigate what the alternate function of this thing does, uh, that would be a tinker check. It's tinker? I mean, if I... Mm. However... This would potentially advance the clock as you are taking time out to do this. How many floors are there on this dungeon? There's at least one more floor, according to them. I ain't worried. Okay. I mean, this thing looks like a turn, so I was just going to try and turn it. <laughs> All right. Well, then go ahead and give me a tinker check. Oh, God. Well, I'm going to use effort to make this. Because <laughs> oh I'm not a tinkerer. But... Uh, position? Um, mm. This is controlled. Because, again, you're mm -hmm. just being given, like, this slow tour of the um, facilities. Hold, hold on, hold on, Oven. Um, can I first do parable? Sure. Can I sure. grab onto that sense I just had and, and see what kind of reading yes. Noom gives to me? Okay. This is the path of... And I predict kind of full success, because, <laughs> of course... Okay, this is the path of lightning. Boring answer, Wait. but true. Wow, answer. surprise. All right. All right. Take that 1D. Oh, God. Okay. So you have uh, plus 2D at this point. Um, and Tinker? Wait, why would I put. Oh, because I'm acting on it? I see. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, this is Tinker. Okay. I'm using this controlled modifier plus 2D. All right. Um, I don't think I need to attempt. I don't think I want. I'm instinctually. Would you like lesser messing. harm or a minor complication? Minor complication. <laughs> okay. Do you see this beautiful little gear system? I sure do. The gears spin around such that the smaller gear is facing directly south, and it shoots a bolt of lightning. Uh, Doug will oh. make a saving throw. <laughs> Americus oh, no. instantly knocked out by this. Who? Americus, our lovely tour guide. Oh. Doggle. Ah! Can I inter? Which this was Americus, right? Yeah. No, this is just like some guy. They're quiet. Where's America? Americus is, like, deep, deep in the south. He was yelling to try oh, to get really? you guys to, like, oh. hurry up. <laughs> okay, I just... Guys, it's fine. What are you talking about? <laughs> Duggle, oh, okay. uh, you take five points of damage as you are zapped by this bolt. Why? What, what did you do, Duggle? Nothing! You did it! I, I, I'm my way over here. How could I do it? They're connected! And you Owen, open up a... You blast a passage to the south that you can just barely... Duggle. Ooh, he did find something out. How could you not mess with it? <laughs> it's a dungeon. <laughs> <laughs> Gruel, as you step forward, you notice that this thing is designed to open up this passage. It's blasted a hole into it. There is a hidden room here. Uh, Gruel speaks up. Americus, come back. Maybe not safe. Americus he is, is unconscious. unconscious. Uh, oh, I, I want to go down and bring them up. Can I cast I'll... Bless on them? For science, can I mess with the thing again? In the same way? Uh, yeah, you shoot another <laughs> bolt. Uh, at this point, oh. Zephyr pulls Americus out of the way. 
<laughs> okay, yeah, they definitely seem connected, guys. Uh... Like, you see, like, Duggle and Gruel just, like, jump into, like, the alcove that you're like, why is there an <laughs> alcove here? Oh, that's why! As this just giant blast of lightning shoots past you all. Duggle, you're so smart, they were connected. <laughs> There's something <laughs> down here. It found something. Uh, Wait, what the it. hell's that? I bet Americus would tell us something, but yeah. he's kind of, you know, sleeping on the job. Slacker. And there, I, there I is your complication. Ameri Americus will be unconscious for this dungeon. <laughs> <laughs> I want to leave him in the room with the other Tutherian. <laughs> Uh, making a pile of bodies that's great you just see like the they were already like concerned about you being here but like the miscellaneous researchers are just now like terrified <laughs> and they're like trying to give you as much space as possible i was like since you've been here you just blew up a wall and knocked their commanding researcher unconscious in like 10 seconds they don't and know what you're doing but you're psionic dangerous. crystal you are dangerous <laughs> Oh, no, I don't have the healers. I think you're starting to learn. <laughs> Doug Duggle is just going to open the chest before Oven does it in such a way that destroys everything. Ah, smart. <laughs> All right. Inside, you find another legendary relic item. This one, uh, you witness as you look down on it that this... Um, so is it a weapon or an armor, uh, Hats? For your relic. I forgot what I chose. Uh, um, you chose the Aaron hair. Let me look that up so I can remember what it does. Wow. So what, It's been a while. What this does is on a 14 clubs. plus, your attack inflicts vulnerable, and if they're already vulnerable, they take bonus damage. Um, yeah, let's... Oh, wow. Let's go with weapon for that. That sounds weapony. Okay. Staff. So this is a very cool looking like silver staff that has the head of a wolf on it. Very pretty. Looks really nice. Um, as you touch it, it is made of divinium and the colors shift around on it. So like it's primarily made of silver and then it has a divinium core. Um, what color is the internal core that mostly shows in the eye, but it's sort of like a gnarled, uh, winding branches of silver with a dark core inside? That's the divinium. Um, mostly shows in the eyes. Fox only at three. We're we're good. we're golden. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna stick with blue on this. Okay. This is right, okay. blue in the middle. Uh, you see that it is inscribed Vul Zevreb. However, Ooh. when you touch it, you can choose to keep this inscription or to change it because it does shift in your image. Would you like to keep this historical marking of Vul Zevreb? Class. Yeah, um... You want to place it to say Duggle instead, if you'd like. I'm going, I'm going to roll uh, a d2. One is, <laughs> it stays the same. D2 is, Duggle accidentally defaces an ancient artifact. D3 is something uh, entirely wrong. Okay, oh. it stays the same. Nice. For now. That's a mouthful. Oh, um, sorry, um, please don't hurt me, but... Uh, Americus is unconscious, so... I'm, I, I can tell you at least... Yes, sorry about that. That was uh, truly an accident. He shouldn't have stood there. That door, we have <laughs> not been able to open it. it. It's magically locked in some way. It's we, We've tried everything. It has well, a reflective force field. Don't use force against it, please. Um, which door? 
But uh. looking beneath the door, because you can see underneath it, apparently there are symbols of the Viridian Knights there. Okay, <gasps> that's all I know. Please don't hurt me. Bye. We're... No. No. The... No. The... They stopped. No. Excuse They're me, just come like back here. Visibly Dougal through. said no. No, I'm not saying that to them. I'm saying this okay. to you. You go. Grow up points. Okay. All right. They just run like they're taking American. Yeah. He just walks by. He's like chewing. I, I like bandaged some... her up as well as I could until I get my healer's kit back. You see, I, uh, Point has all. like some sort of like snack that he's chewing on. Oh, it's e Americus, not like American. Is oh. yeah. <laughs> you do not touch this door. I know that. I know. Why? I know if I, I if nobody touches it, you will. But I am not. You want to touch it? No, but I. Ugh. Well, if you don't touch it, I'm going to touch it. I am. Yes, exactly. That's the problem. <laughs> All right, fine. If you want to touch it, I will. Uh, this is Douglas. an exceedingly difficult What's... door, so you cannot open it in one go. There is, in fact, a clock for opening this door, and trying to open this door will take time. Why does this door What's fucking this? make noise? Huh? That, I think, is a hatch to a lower level. Yeah. Um, um, that's the hatch to the lower level. Hatch. We have a locked door to keep the undead from getting back up. Okay. What's this room up here? You guys, we're all going to so, get shot by like a lightning trap when you guys is... open this door. I can't open that door to my Turnabout is fair play. Dougal is grumpy after getting zapped. <laughs> um, <laughs> so you know what? I want to be beside you so I can potentially, you know, help if you do get hit by something. Okay. Um, so let's. Dougal is going to start this as Dougal does by studying the thing. I'm not actually in this space, but my arm is with the torch. <laughs> and how are you doing this? Is this controlled? Risky or desperate? This is controlled. Duggle is not going to... Take your time? Okay. Yes. Duggle, go ahead and, and give me a study. I'm going to... Um... Uh, does this door look magical in any way? The door is not in of itself magical. However, apparently it is enchanted in some manner. Uh -huh. I'll trust you. Yeah. Hell yeah. Okay. You advance plus two on the, or sorry, this is plus two on the clock. And then because it's super powered, your next action, you will have plus one D for the remainder of the scene, which is unlocking this door. Congratulations on the success. Okay. Okay. What does he learn about the door? This is possible. This door is wildly enchanted. Uh, there are layers upon layers of traps that have been put on this door. The oh. level of arcan arcanistry, which is the term for arcane expertise, I guess, uh, is well above and beyond anything that you've seen in the Academy. It's... Okay. Okay. Just gotta... Um... However, it is a layered series of traps. Which means it's just a matter of taking them out one by one. Don't overcomplicate it. Yep. One thing at a time. It's. What, kind of what happens really? if we just like triggered all the traps? Would no. Just solve the problem. No. I mean, what do you mean no? It's worked. So far. If you tried to tear the door off the hinges, you would explode, and we would not have an oven anymore. Yeah, and but I mean, all has to, to be. Why don't we just get like one of the researchers to like do it? Because they haven't been able to do it yet. I mean, that's because they're scared. They were waiting. This dungeon um, was waiting for Duggle. I will. To open this door. I will spend an effort on this. Um, so it's plus one d for uh, the effort, plus one d for the super powered effect. Mm -hmm. So you're gonna roll six. He's, he's trying to unravel the trap. I Dude, come on. No, this, this is what, this is. 
This is Tinker, because I'm actually working with it now, I assume. So, yep. What, what's your base Tinker? Two. Two. Four again. Good odd. Good odd. Hell, oh my oh. god! Come on, oh you're so god. good. The dungeon clock does not advance. As a result of a critical success with increased effect from the controlled position, in fact, I will give you two options. Uh, number one, you can decrement the clock by one. Number two, you can give yourself plus one D to investigating the room afterwards. I'll take the plus one D. All right. Mm. So yeah, clock's pretty low. you unlock each spell one by one. Oven seems... Like, I imagine Oven gets increasingly impatient because Duggal is just casting repeated spells, um, like, stepping back, casting spells, looking at it from different angles. But, after the last one opens, the door miraculously splits in half, like, um, not like a clean split, but you can see the door is split in half and it has sort of, like, two layers. Um, to it, so it's sort of, like, diagonal, and one half goes up, the other half goes down. And you see inside a beautifully lit chamber that bears the insignia of the Viridian Knights. There is a magical lit um, sort of awning above you that as you step in, it just lightly prestidigitates you, leaving you smelling minty fresh. And just overall, like, cleansing you of, like, just benign ailments and unpleasantry. Your breath feels fresher. And you Be realize this room is lightly air-conditioned magically by this awning. Nobody had to get zapped by lightning. Because you just have to be careful. Wow, that's... Good work, Duggo. Let's go on a ten-minute break. That's deep. I, I walk through the awning like 12 times. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, let's go on a 10 minute break. Very good. Alright. I'm going to go get some water and I'll be back shortly.
this uh, rug has like that illusion pattern. Now, is it a vase or is it two faces looking at each other? Hi, I'm back. Hello. I think we're all back. Not Duggle. He just hasn't marked not AFK. Yeah, he, he was talking. Oh, yeah. All right. So you come to this room. It's beautifully kept. It is bearing the insignias of the Viridian Knights. Which is bad. Hashtag not yeah. good. I go, I, I want to start taking down the, the, is it like banners with Viridian Knight on it? You can. I just want to take it down. As you take it down, you notice that there are electricity and arrow traps behind it that Douglas deactivated. Oh. Good job. Thank you. You remember well, the thing, has, well uh, if we had set off the traps, it would have destroyed these tapestries. So Yeah, but they're pretty night tapestries. Yeah, I know, that's the thing. If we had set them off, it would have been destroyed, which would have been a good thing. You can still destroy them if you want. That's yeah. Maybe we should keep them as evidence. Or maybe we can use them in the future if we need to trick the Viridian Knights. Maybe we should look at these documents on the desk. (gasps) Freed? What is that? Okay, this will be a study check to, like, fully investigate everything that's going on. Oh, boy. You do have a plus 1D to it. Yeah. Oh, nice. The plus one deep mattered. It did. No failure, no advance of the clock. Uh, Duggle, you are looking through this and you realize that this person is very systematic in how they do things. So as you open the door, you notice that they have a, uh, like a, just a, a small standardized pouch of diamond dust, which you clip. So take plus one dust. Just bear, keep that in mind. Um, and it's marked for emergency restoration. You quickly surmise these are Van Il's research notes. This must be Van Il's because he literally signs off uh, on it. Who is Van Il? Van Il goes on. Um, well, Vanil begins by stating, essentially, I have found one of Bale's ships. I've given the information to Lord Biscuit, who has taken the information, and decided Biscuit's it... Biscuit's a lord now? And decided it is not worth investigating any further. So I've decided to investigate it myself, in private. Though it won't advance our goals in finding where the star map leads, I suspect there's something more to be found here. I will conclude my research notes at the end. Two members of the Tutharian military, please leave these intact, as this will later be investigated by further members of the Viridian Knights. Our continued cooperation is to our mutual agreement. The notes begin very simply, describing how they encountered the reality. Uh, The reality apparently crash-landed in Hinklia as part of the battle to heaven. Some of you may be shocked to find out, perhaps Duggal less so, that the other planes in Lascalia are literally the other planets in the not solar system, but the terrestrial system, as uh, this world is not heliocentric, but is in fact geocentric. So... Uh, The other planets, one of the planets of which is Heaven. So when the ships were inhabited with Divinium, they were able to go into space and literally fight their way into Heaven that way. When they were crashed down, they flew back into the Earth or into Noom, causing this crater. 
Vanil found this place because he was um, locating like all the celestial bodies and discovered that there was some sort of a like a disturbance in one of the patterns that could only be described by if something were to mess up the orbit of just like miscellaneous celestial bodies that they had found. So uh, when he traced the, the path down, he realized that something interrupted like a small uh, asteroid in the, the belt that surrounds heaven and would have landed here. Of course, since this is geocentric, he can calculate this a lot more easily, as he does not need to calculate how they're moving in relation to the sun. Dougal, you're able to figure out what all this means because you have an increased effect, a critical success. When this place crash landed, um, he realized immediately that this was transporting some serious cargo. You see, it, it's not about the Divinium items that it, that it had, though he determined that there were a few Divinium items that were being brought. Uh, with the intention of the reality being more of a transport ship, the real weapons that it was bringing on board were the Harbingers. Vanel describes how he goes deeper into here to find the Harbingers. Unfortunately, finding that most of the Harbingers were dead, as they were not able to survive the crash onto the ground. However, he does note that two of the Harbingers have escaped, uh, and that one of the Harbingers remains guarding the ship. He does not know exactly what he's supposed to do about the Harbinger guarding the ship, as he describes it as more than any um, than anything he can handle on his own, unless he were to release, of course, his limiter, but he refuses to do so, uh, as if he does so, it will jeopardize his mission. He does not describe what the mission is, or how releasing the limiter would jeopardize it. Just merely brings it up as, of course. Dougal, you find reading through these notes really obnoxious because this guy uses his own sort of shorthand, which is very difficult to decipher. It's extremely self-congratulatory, and Vanilla is undeniably a genius. Nonetheless, yeah, but I like I imagine that part of why Dougal can read this quicker is that he's got a sense of okay, nope, this this chunk is all him congratulating himself. So is this chunk, skip past that, and here we've got actual stuff again. <laughs> that's that's pretty good. So you learn a little bit about the Harbingers. Uh, he doesn't know what the Harbingers are. Just that the Harbingers are apparently extremely powerful entities. Uh, and the Harbingers were like a secret weapon that Bale had. And that therefore they were put on the reality... So, the idea is that the reality, when it got onto heaven, he would release them, and then, I don't know. It's not really clear exactly what the plan was with the, the Harbingers. What is clear, and a bit shocking to you, well, some of these names. Not all of them mean anything to you. Like, you see, one of the names is the... Here, I'll type it out. So, Siberius Faxed uh, is the one on the ship. This means nothing to you. Like, what, who, what does that even... Siberius Faxed? Uh, no role will give you information on this person. You have no way of knowing who that is. Uh, the next one, Aura or Naud, means nothing to you. Who is that? But then the last one... Mott fell. Wow, the last one's Pogchamp. Mott fell. Fell. Like, mist fell. Mm-hmm. Unlike, unlike, it's only two letters Duggle? away from mist fell. You know Mott like fell. You know Mott fell extremely well. He's what your boss. <gasps> He is in charge. 
Uh, the Museum of Artifactual Oddities and Misfell no. Poly <gasps> Magic. Oh, it's the mummy! Ah. Dad. Is it the mummy? It's the mummy? Yes, yeah. that's the mummy. Yes, I thought, okay, yeah, I thought so. That <sighs> can't be right. I'm sorry, right? did, did you just read that out loud correctly? Like, from Misfell Poly Magic? The curator. Working with the Freddy Knights? The curator is not working with the Viridian Knights. The curator is a harbinger that escaped yeah. from the reality at some point. Yeah, that's... Oh, okay, that's fine, of course. Yeah, no, of course, as long yeah. as you're not working with that. <laughs> that's like... And then he turned his life around and got into academics. Huh. Or I just became a librarian, really. What do you think? <laughs> yeah. That's... Okay. He's, he's I, a bringer. Wow. Apparently, or like named after a harbinger or something. I don't know, but he's that's a mummy. It, you know, it could just be his body. I, I, I guess. It then goes on. A little bit to describe, like, the, the tiny bit of information that Vaniel has on the Harbingers. This one is particularly important, so if you have notes, I would take this note down. I'm not certain if Mutt Fell is related to Mist Fell in any way, but at the very least, I know he is related to the one Harbinger of which I am aware. The accursed Firafell. A Firafell? How do you spell that? Oh, there you go. Thank you. And, and who are they? Are they related to Mattfell somehow? They are related to Mattfell, but he doesn't know if Mistfell has anything to do with the Fell. Just because they both have Fell in their name. Maybe that means something. Maybe it's a coincidence. Uh, Fear of Fell is another Harbinger? Yes. The accursed Fear of Fell, the one of which he is aware. Um... I'm gonna be honest, I don't really know how to process all of this right now, but um let's I'm just sure. I'm keep sure it in mind. Might, there some kind of problem might, here? might, I know exactly how to process this. Far more simple than you're making it. So, I heard your account of this man, Vanille, whatever. And according to that, the reality was carrying Divinium items. Right. Mate, sounds like we've got a fucking score on our hands. That's how we take it, am I right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let's go! You know what? For, for now, sure... Sure, let's just go with that for now. Wait, what do you mean for now? Like, you think there's more to it? No, no just... What do, you, what do you mean now? No, I found out that thinking. my boss was a harbinger or something? Mate, I don't even know what a harbinger is, do you? Really? Honest talk, do you know what a harbinger is? Sounds like a pretty cool title. Can we be harbingers? I... No. Right. Wait. Now, you, this... hold on, hold on. I... I'm making a point here, you know. Sort of my... I try to. Uh, yeah, I get it, because your name's Point. Yeah, I'm trying to make this my catchphrase. Do you think it's going to work? Anyways, I'm trying to make yes. a point here. So, you don't know what a Harbinger is, but you do know your boss is a mummy. Now, I happen to know that. That's common knowledge about Miss Phil. Right? Yes. So, you're saying the book is proper old, isn't it? Yeah. 
So is it really surprising that an old bloke happens to be in an old place? Yes, well, miss, but miss for that, sake of argument, way. no. I mean, like, what, what's really to be surprised about? You found out he's from this old ship. All right. So what? This old ship that was used to Wait. wage war on the gods. Mate, it doesn't, he was brought by on the ship. It doesn't say he was voluntarily there. I mean, they might have just... No, but that's still not just an old ship. Well... I think Sorry. your history with him warns enough that you we could ask him and at least hear his side out. Yeah, exactly. He's probably like completely reasonable when you one thing That's... that I've learned uh, on my many years on Noom is that for the most part people are good. Yes. I I'm not saying this cuz I'm judging him. It's really weird to have come up. Well, you know what else is, is weird? weird? Yeah, you're right about that. You know what else is weird? Lots of what? lots of things, yes. That's right, a whole fucking lot's weird. The way I see it, as I've been getting older, as I've been learning more about the world, the more I learn, the more I realize I'm never going to figure any of this shit out. The more I learn, the more things that I have to learn. So, mm -hmm. I've reached a point in my life well, I've realized there's no point caring about it. Like, what's the point? I I'm trying to, like, drill this this sort of, like, name pun thing on a little bit too much, and I I'm laying it on a bit thick at this point. Ah, oh, god damn, I can't stop. Bloody hell. Anyway. You'll, let me... You'll, you'll listen. figure the balance out, I'm, I'm sure. You have reached... A stage in your development as a traveler and investigator where you realize that this world is full of insane things that defy comprehension. And it's a bit startling. I remember my first real adventure when I found out that the bird that I was going to be hunting turned out to be a minor demigod. That was surprising. But, nonetheless, literally a bunch of wandering chefs came by and killed it. I mean, they're probably hungry, right? They did it so they Actually, could win a cooking contest, mate. <sighs> there was a frog who preached the word of an, a divine being called the Frog King, who I had never heard of at any point prior to my life. And keep in mind, at that point, I've been traveling for quite a while, even though I was just like a little kid back then. He blessed me, the Frog King. And I was able to literally snipe a demigod. That was the moment I put my hands up and went, All right, I'm just along for the fucking ride at this point. I don't need to be a master of anything. The sooner that you realize that everything around you is weird as hell, the sooner that you'll be comfortable with it all. He's he's okay. very right. You're okay. I he's got you know what? Yeah. I get it. I understand where you're coming from. Now, with that aside, who wants to steal some divinium weapons from one of the greatest demigods in history? Of yeah, course. I love Floyd. Uh, yeah. Although <laughs> I, I thought we were. I was thinking more of stealing, like, a couch cushion first. I was thinking of pushing this entire couch out of the way right. to see if there's anything right, yeah. underneath it. But... Let's, let's move this couch. All right. One. All right. You got to lift. And then we lift it. Owen probably flips it up over on top of me. Has... Duggal just shoves the notes into notes. Um, and... Uh -huh. Yeah. All right. That's, you're absolutely right. A uh, point is, like, the fine line between, like, brilliant and completely insane. <laughs> the don't worry about it thing, or don't, yeah, just don't let it just flow, The go with the flow thing, Zephyr really agrees with. That, that's not, that does not 
prove in any way that, that Point is any more sane. I know, I'm just saying that Zephyr's like, oh, this guy knows what he's talking about. I mean, let, let's be real here. Like, what kind of person at the age of eight says, hey, my best friend, I'm going to help you take down a country, and then decides to fight a demigod to be better useful in taking down a country? I like his style. Point is not sane in, like, any sense of the word. Is there anything underneath this coach? Uh, yeah, you find a coin. A coin? So, should we mark down one dust? No. If we one slash open the cushions, the is there anything in the cushions? Uh, you slash open, and, um, the... Well, don't, don't slash all of them. The I stuffing comes up. Alright, alright, that is officially... Long enough for you guys right, to have I been think, in this I room. One, you can, so I can sit on it. <laughs> you, you can go now. We're, we're going now. Right. So, so Ovin, if there on. is something in this cushion that we haven't cut open, we'll know eventually, because I'll, I'll be sitting on it. I mean, we didn't check the drawers for false bottoms yet, guys. Mate. You just see uh, the like, <laughs> just walk the distance. Mate, why is this? Why would this guy hide so much in a room that he's put so many traps in? In case someone disables the traps and survives. Well, it sounds like he's not proper concerned. With, uh, what I'm curious about is why he's left the dust there. Uh, does he just leave dust all around everywhere he goes? Said, I'm, lesser uh, restor said restoration funds. Oh, I see. So. I'm saying is that what we should do is we should find this Vanil and follow him around, and then everywhere that he stops by, he's probably left dust. So then we can just stock up on diamond dust that way. I mean, yeah, 100% of the places he's been that we've checked have had dust. That's right. It's important to have emergency funds. So what, what's this room about up north? Do we ever get to what this room is Yeah, there about? is a psionic crystal oh, to that interface was, that with. That was the psionic. Okay, yeah. 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 All right. That's where we'll end our session for now. Cool. Next session we nice. will continue. Let's take a look, take a brief little gander before we start our end of session. Our dungeon clock is at 4 out of 12. There is at least one floor remaining. Not bad. Yeah, you're doing pretty good. You have found some Divinium item. So, Blix. Let's take a look at abilities. First of all, there have been um, one. There's been one major conflict here, so that's one XP. Yes. Hold on. Can't I? Okay. Yes. One XP. One personal resolve. Mm -hmm. That is. There it is. Abilities. All right. Um, patience, wisdom, experience. Uh, eh, not really. Wisdom. Or... Wait, what's uh, the question about I, 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 ideals? Right, that's what we're going through. Hmm. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. My, my, my. Yeah, I address challenges with patience, wisdom, or experience. Uh, not really. Express my heritage, background, or beliefs through my actions. Yeah, I tried to defuse a potentially violent situation. I did mm -hmm. not succeed, so that's mm -hmm. not number three. But I think I got, yeah. You know, I tried to, like, hey, we captured you immediately, back down. But Yeah, uh, you tried. It didn't work out. I tried. So I'd, I'd say made. one. I'd say one experience. Okay. Duggle. All right, so the one for the um, combat. I address challenges with investigation, intuition, and planning. I, that, that door was couldn't, sure. is extremely that, like mm -hmm. the whole methodical approach, and which I could also use for expressed heritage and background through words and actions, but what I'm going to point to is overcame inherent self-doubt to express myself when Dougal got so upset about being fried by lightning for no good reason that um, he forgot to be nervous and 
briefly took charge of things. It's really cool how Douglas like slowly becoming confident, but just in like the weirdest ways possible. Like none of the ways that you would want in character development. Yeah. <laughs> Like it's not it's not that he's growing, it's that his patience is growing thin instead <laughs> of his character growing large. <laughs> All right, that's three XP for there. Leaving me one short of level three. The most frustrating amount to be short by. Wait, you're almost level three? What? That, that's not right. That's not I think that's right. Sort of Oh, I I must have not T ticked it over last time. All right. I was wondering, so I'm at three <laughs> XP. All right, Gru will. Unless you uh, magically got like twelve more XP than us. No, oh, yeah. there's no way that's true. We got one XP for combat, right? Yep, one yep. XP for combat. Cool. Uh, address challenges with compassion, wisdom, perseverance, excellent heritage, background, and release some actions. Uh, I don't really know. I did. Uh, I did kind of like drag the bodies, the unconscious bodies, back to yep. them. I don't know that's that absolutely okay. one. Cool. Uh, I mean, none of us were doing that. That's clearly a difference. Uh, I think that's it, though. Um, I'm actually going to say that's like a 2-4, because you, you actually did that the entire time. Um, because that is expressing your heritage and beliefs through your actions in the, like, the most extreme way possible. Right? Because you grew up with Shell Mauritian monks. And you're just going around, like, literally, if you scroll up in the chat, you can just see, like, while everyone else is doing other stuff, Gruel's, like, performing first aid and, like, making sure everyone is safe. The entire time. I was doing, I was doing some first aid on America. You were too, as well, yes. Uh, yeah. yeah, you were as well. I'm just saying, like, the entire time while everyone else is, like, talking and fighting and all that and, like, blowing up the walls and like blowing up the crystals and like not blowing up the door interesting that my relic wasn't behind the door that was opened by lightning it is interesting i mean that would be pretty convenient if i think it's the first <laughs> person to go and touch it <laughs> it's yeah. Their relic, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> yeah that's actually how i'm doing it is just these uh treasure yeah. chests it's cool it feels very organic though so mm -hmm. nice that's not to be clear. That's not why I decided to go and enter, open the chest, but I'm not displeased with the result. <laughs> uh, Zephyr, you. Oh, sorry, not Zephyr. <laughs> we already did that one. Sorry, Ovin. Um, ideals. I address challenges with strength, leadership, or force. I'm pretty sure I use both strength, force, and mm -hmm. tried to command those guys around. <laughs> yeah. Um, I express my heritage background or beliefs through my actions. Um, I mean, I think you're pretty clear on Ovin's, you know, behaviors at this point. <laughs> yes, I'm going to say yes for a reason. I'll see if you can figure out the reason. If not, I'll tell you. Uh, well, I'm curious to know what you're, you think. The reason is... You explicitly and very definitively got into a battle with the Tetherian military on the grounds of protecting Hinclea. Yeah, they're, they're literally trying to claim this land as theirs when it's clearly in Hinclea. It's yeah. not something Owen would ever <laughs> agree with. Yeah, that's your, that's your background right there. So there you go. All right. Both Duggle and combat? both Duggle and Gruel are like unpleasantly close to leveling. No, um, I, I think I had just not rolled over because there's no way I was almost level mm -hmm. three, right? Yeah, we I had we barely just, hit level two it, last time. Yeah, I, we exactly hit level two last time. What are we calling this one? Mm. Uh, water dungeon, water temple. Water. It's not really a water temple, isn't it? It's not really. Um, it was called a temple originally, but that was just because they didn't know what it was. Uh, it's really more of like a monument dungeon. to a crashed airship. Mm. Uh, let's see. 
UFO. I don't know. It's underwater. UFO is a, like that one goes wild. Cause we did. Isn't it a UWO? Well, we did like drop like the, the wildest lore reveal of Lascalia. Actually, not really. Lascalia lore is weird, but this one in particular, just like all the other planes are actually just other planets. That's pretty. Yeah, weird. that is. That's pretty cool. Yeah. That's uh, yeah, that's um. You mean heaven's doing. just another planet? It's not like a plane of existence. It's just a it's planet. Not another universe entirely. Yeah. <laughs> well, it is. An, it's, it's just, just also planet. yeah, just also a planet. That that's how cosmology works, oh. you guys. What? I well, you, you usually it's just like it's the whole like planes. You have to actually teleport to them. No, I, 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 I was saying that from Douglas perspective yeah. of, oh. uh, I, yeah, I mean, I had a whole astronomy class and everything. I've looked through, looked at hell through a telescope. It's not great. Yeah. Uh, so the basically like uh, think of like Uranus or um, like Pluto or like these really far away cold planets. That's the depths. Oh. And then, like, Mercury would be hell. Jupiter would be heaven because of all the clouds and everything. And then Mars would be essentially, like, that would be the Feywild because it's very similar to, to Noom. But in this world, uh, the Feywild is also luscious and green. I think Venus would be the Feywild. Oh, that's, that's true. Venus is most closely related to Earth. Yeah, so that's sort of how it's set up. Now, there's also planar, like, portals and such that you can use to go between the planes, like fairy rings, but then you can also just fly to the other planes as well if you have a way of surviving space. Like, the Calamity Dragons will fly between the planes. For example. Well, I don't need to breathe, so... That's true, Duggle I'll... could... Or not, Douglas. Zephyr could potentially travel through space at high chapters. It would just take you a while. But yeah, um, the the reason why this matters is because in the Hellbound campaign, where they actually like go from Hell to Noom, like they will literally shoot people out of a cannon uh, from Hell to the surface of Lascalia. The heck. How would you even? How long would that take, and how, how would you survive? Magic, magic, <laughs> magic. Yeah, hell pods so are fun. So what are we? Yeah, in the stuff? the universe that I roughly cre- the world I'm roughly planning out, you know, writing a thing down every two weeks. Yeah, it's the same way. It's a, but it's a heliocentric. The sun is literally the god. Spooky. Yeah. All right. So, what are we calling? We've got UFO as a proposed water temple. I want to say under pressure, back. but like it, there wasn't really that much pressure. <laughs> about this? Uh, this is cool. UFO kind of works. Yeah. UFO under. Uh, you don't even need slash. Sounds like the name of a new XCOM game, like one of the '90s ones. That's the thing. Like, it does, yeah. Well, what Let's do you go look with at that? that? I like it. it. Like, that's... it's one of those titles where you're like, it's UFO slash under pressure, and then you like have to go wait. Okay, so it's not an acronym. They're not saying what UFO stands for. Yeah, it's one of those that like it's evocative. You're like, what does that mean? All right. Uh, see you next week. I think. All right. Well, yeah. Let's see you then. Good to two. Oh, and just to con- just because I want to confirm, we have not heard of Harbingers before this, right? That's correct. There's a okay. soundboard. That-